Colorado defeats Notre Dame. That's clear cut. But if not, other factors come into play. With this top matchup, weather conditions, breezy, temperature at 65 degrees in Tampa, Florida on New Year's Day, 1990. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Crickey with a moderate shot and a most happy new year to you and yours and all the best in the coming year. A very good matchup today. Ohio State comes in with the number one scoring offense in the Big Ten. And Auburn has one of the best defenses in America. The Tigers are number two in the nation in stopping scoring, just less than 11 points a game. Well, the neat thing about this game is in the past, when you think about Ohio State, you think about that strong running attack. But Coach John Cooper has brung, brung a team in here that can not only run, they can pass, and what they do best is score. Now, what their task will be is to stop that big-time offense of the Auburn Tigers led by Reggie Slack and Alexander Wright, one of the best college receivers that I have ever seen. He's a flyer, Alexander Wright, averaging almost 26 yards a catch. On the sideline today for NBC Sports is Jim Donovan. Jim? Thank you very much, Don, and Happy New Year to you and Ahmad and everybody else. Ohio State feels that they'll be able to run the football today much better than they did against Michigan because their junior running back, Carlos Snow, has been plagued by knee injuries, is as healthy today as he has been at any time this season. With 12 touchdowns, 948 rushing yards, look for Carlos Snow to run wild today, and the Buckeyes will need him. Back upstairs. John Cooper, in his second year as the head coach of the Buckeyes, has turned the program back around and it's heading towards the top again. Last year, the Buckeyes under Cooper won just four games. But right now, they're eight and three, going for a ninth win. As Cooper says, Auburn's probably not very happy about losing two games, but we're delighted with winning eight. He's been underplaying his team all week in the local papers. The Buckeyes are a substantial underdog. But Cooper's been very pleased with his team's work this week, and so has Pat Dye. These guys play a game every day in practice. I mean, the Tigers are not come out hitting every day. Well, they talk about intensity. Even when you're around this team in practice, they really play at a high level, and that's one of the things why they win so many football games. They start the game at a very high level, and they don't dip out at all. You talk about Pat Dye. He said, you know what? My players, they don't quit, and they don't let down. They play for 60 minutes. What a... Pat Dye's credos. He said, I don't believe in miracles. I do believe in never letting up. Now back deep is Alexander Wright, the fastest player on the field today. A five-time track All-American. Five different events over the years at Auburn. Played just one year of high school football. Every time he gets the ball, he could take it in. Kickoff by Morrow is a high spinner. Gusting winds will affect play, and here comes Wright for Auburn. He is across the 20. Good special teams play by the Buckeyes. Takes him down at the 22-yard line. 12-yard return. Here's Reggie Slack coming out to lead the Auburn Tigers at quarterback. Had that brilliant game in the upset of Alabama. James Joseph and Alex Strong listed as the starting runners. We'll see a lot of Stacy Danley also as a runner for the Tigers. Victor Hall, a good blocking tight end. Taylor, an underrated wide receiver. Alexander Wright could go in the first round of the NFL draft. As the Tigers come out, first play from scrimmage. I set in the backfield. Both teams basically run from the I formation. And Slack ready to pump down field on the first down. He throws a strike. Makes the connection out to the 40-yard line. Alexander right off the flank. So very quick. Loses the corner and turns in for an 18-yard gain. Alexander Wright has that 4-2 speed, and when you got a player that can run that fast, you got to give, give him a little room, but watch him work this zone here. Sets down right in the zone. Reggie Slack puts the ball right to him. He's got great hands. I've been watching him all week, and that track moniker is, is sort of a misnomer because he is an excellent football player who runs great routes, great hands. Well, the Tigers come out pitching here. Slack again. He's got to hurry it now as the pocket closes down, and they'll get him back at the 26-yard line. Shreko Zizakovic making the play in the Auburn backfield. A big loss on the play, and it knocks the Tigers back to their 27-yard line. Well, Reggie Slack with a lot of time here. He can't really find a receiver, but as he rolls to the left, it's very hard for him to get in a situation where he can throw the ball. He gets dropped for a 13-yard loss. A right-handed quarterback rolling out to the left. He's got to get a chance to set his feet before he throws the ball, and that just didn't happen there on that play. The Ohio State coaches, is interesting amount, were expecting Auburn to come out running, try to establish that. 
just as they did against the Tide. Auburn has come down and not pitching, and here's a handoff to Danley. A 215-pound runner. He's across the 30 to the 31, making it third and long. Rest of the Auburn offense, Bob Meeks and Rob Selby, two big tackles. The guards, left guard Ed King is one of the best in America. He is only a sophomore. Hudson's an all-SEC player at center. Rose at right guard. Win Lyle, a top place kicker, and the punter is Richie Nell. Third down comes up now for the Auburn Tigers. Third down and 19 from their 31. Slack with a deep drop. Stands in. Let's her go long. Downfield to right. And the ball is tipped away, defended against by Foster Paul. Number 22, who is from Sarasota, Florida. So the Tigers try to hit deep and cannot do it after opening the game with an 18-yard completion. If there's any question about Reggie Slack's arm, he put this ball right on target. Just a drop by Alexander Wright. Pat Sullivan, the quarterback coach, tells me that Reggie Slack is one of the best in college football, should be a star in the pro. Jeff Graham runs back to punt. Takes it to about the 35-yard line. Jeff Graham, he is Ohio State's big play man at wide receiver. A 47-yard punt and a 13-yard return by number 84. Jeff Graham, who can break it with the punt return, ran one back against Illinois for 66 yards and a touch. Fry is the quarterback. He's a junior from Cincinnati, the Big Ten passing efficiency leader. Snow and Graham combined for 20 touchdown runs. Tight end Palmer can catch the ball deep. Ends the guy to watch Beatty though. Small but very sure-handed could be a factor. As Ohio State gets the ball for the first time in the scoreless game. The fame game from Tampa. Up back gets the ball. That's the fullback, Scotty Graham, and he hits out across the 35-yard line for a gain of three. Moxley and Stasiak, 300-pound offensive tackles for Ohio State. Coles and Davidson at guard. Davidson an all-Big Ten player. Beatty's at center. Ohio State averaging 20 pounds a man more than the San Francisco 49ers on their offensive front. Omoro's the place kicker. Bowman the punter for the Buckeyes. Second down comes up now for Ohio State. Second and seven. Fry, the quick out. He goes to Graham, who's ahead to the 43-yard line. He'll be short of the first down by about two yards. Coming up to make the tackle was inside linebacker Quinton Riggins. Auburn with a very strong defensive team, a hallmark of Auburn Tiger football. Tate at nose tackle weighs over 300. Rodgers and Horn are the tackles. Ogletree, a first-team All-American. Billingsley, the other outside backer. Riggins, a player to watch. And so is Crawford, two highly rated inside backers for the Tiger. Third down and two for Ohio State. Snow with his first carry, and Auburn shuts it down. He's cut down short of the 45-yard line where he had to go for the first down. Quentin Riggins, a second-team Sporting News All-American, came in to make the play. Here's some more of the Ohio State defense when they're in there. Tom Leese and Alonzo Spellman are the outside backers. Judah Herman and MVP Derek Isom in the inside backers. Clark and Brown at the corners. They'll be coming back out shortly as Ohio State is now ready to punt the ball. Shane Wasden is back deep for Auburn. Ball hit downfield with a gusting wind behind it. Here is Wasden from the 20. And he is out to the 27-yard line where the Auburn Tigers will go on offense for the second time in the scoreless game in a moment. 10.47 to play in the first quarter at the Hall of Fame Bowl, 1990 in Tampa, Florida. Nothing up yet. With the Madrasha, this is Don Crickey back at the Hall of Fame game at Tampa Stadium. 70,000 will be in the stands as John Cooper's Buckeyes of Ohio State back in the bowl game for the first time in three years. This is Cooper, as we mentioned, just second year. Pat Dye, bowl teams every year at Auburn. He's been there nine years. This is his eighth bowl team, eight in a row. Now it's score now as Auburn has the ball for a second time and Reggie Slack now goes to the run. This is the quickest Auburn back almost breaking it. Darrell Williams, the freshman they call the Electron. 5'9", 190. He's looked the best in practice this week according to Coach Pat Dye. So he could get a lot of carries. 
Gain on the play of about four, second down and six for Auburn. Tigers came out pitching that first series about hit the big one on first down then couldn't do it. They figured that at some point in time they got a chance to run by some people so they won't hesitate to throw the ball deep. Here's Slack standing in great arm strength as he off the back foot he fires a bullet downfield and on the out pattern makes the connection out to the 35 yard line to Greg Taylor. Benny Clark seven defending on the play. Reggie Slack is showing that tremendous Andre. He had to re-pump here, but you see Greg Taylor, number 16, just standing over there by the sideline. This ball comes on a line, makes a fine catch as he's nailed by Benny Clark, number seven. Takes a lot of concentration when you know you're going to get hit just about the same time you catch the ball. Auburn with one first down in the game. Ohio State with none, and Danley trying to cut back. is tripped up at the line of scrimmage. It was third and short. He might have enough. As we go back to the sideline of Jim Donovan. Uh, you mentioned about John Cooper getting his team back in the bowl picture. He wants to keep them there, too. So recruiting's a big tool. Ten minutes before this team came back out onto the field after their pregame warm-up to start this game, he was on a cellular telephone calling up all his top recruits saying, hey, we're just moments away from playing a New Year's Day bowl game. We'd love to have you here in the next four years. So they're always recruiting, Don. Well, he's hoping to get two great ones from Cleveland, two backs. Next thing we have to do, he says, is keep the great Ohio players in Ohio. Coach Schembechler's come across the border a number of times in recent years. Brought some of the good ones up to Michigan. Well, John Cooper has really brought a great program to Ohio State. I think a lot, of, most of the kids really enjoy playing in this in this program. Very diversified football team. He's a winner. Spent three years at Arizona State before coming to Ohio State. On the rollout, Slack takes a deep drop. The blitz against him. He stands in, and the ball is lost at the 45-yard line of Ohio State. Greg Taylor coming back at the ball. They talk about Slack's courage that he'll stand in against the toughest rush and wait till the last six seconds, get rid of it, and then take the hit. Even, he though, here. even though he's a great athlete that can run the ball, he will stand there and wait till the last minute. He you see Greg Taylor, who's wide open, and Slack puts the ball right to him. Now, in watching him in practice, they didn't drop any of these balls. All of a sudden in the game, I it's more important to catch him today than last week during the course of the week. Pitch back, free ball on the field, and Danley, number 32, who is trying to run with it, falls on his own fumble. But that'll bring up third down and long as the ball is positioned back inside the Auburn 35-yard line. This is an easy pitch to Reggie Slack to Danley. Danley mishandles the ball. Maybe he had his head looking up trying to find some blocking and does a smart thing by just falling on the ball, making sure they keep possession of it. Third down, coming up for Slack. Deep drop with four wideouts. Running downfield patterns, Ohio State. Adam and lost him, and he makes the completion out to James Joseph, who is close to a first down. They're spotting him out of bounds, and Pat Dye might be protesting the spot. It looks like it might be just short. A 12-yard gain. It looked like the Buckeyes had him. But then, somehow, Slack eluded the rush and got it downfield to running back James Joseph. You see the strength of Reggie Slack here. Pat Sullivan, his offensive coach, told me this guy can do everything. He fires it out here to James Joseph. That's another all-around back, and he gets just down there close to the first down. Slack, just as he gets rid of this ball, takes a nice shot there. But still, he keeps his head up, looking downfield, trying to look at the reception. There's a definite chill factor. The listed temperature at kickoff 65, but the chill factor has it way, way below that. Winds gusting over 20 miles an hour. There was heavy rain this morning after a beautiful week of weather in Tampa. A state player thought it was just great, but the temperature dropped a little. They've been practicing in it before they came down. Now fourth and short for Auburn in a scoreless first quarter. And Slack looking for the Buckeyes to jump, but the well-disciplined Ohio State team does not. And that was a called play, Don. They were just trying to get an offsides penalty there, get in there and just call a couple of snaps and hope to get Ohio State offsides. And John Cooper's team, very disciplined, didn't go for it at all. John, a native Tennessean, was a single-wing tailback for the Cyclones of Iowa State as a collegian. And now with no score up, 
Pat Dive plays the percentages and sends out his putter. And Ohio State drops back one of the best punt returners in America in Jeff Graham. There's Richie now ready to punt the ball. You see his first one, 47 yards. John Cooper, a man who plays the psychological game very well, he said playing Auburn down here in SEC countries like playing Notre Dame in Rome. Auburn came in favored by over a touchdown. Nell hits the ball high into the wind. Ohio State lets it roll. It takes an Auburn bounce. And the Tigers will down it at about the 19-yard line. So Ohio State sends its offense out for a second time. Still no score on the board. In the Stadium. Only meeting was back in 1917 between the Buckeyes and the Tigers. That one was played in Montgomery because a number of soldiers from the state of Ohio were stationed there getting set to go to World War I, the Great War. They staged a football game for Morrell and they played to a scoreless tie. Not much form chart to go on. This year, neither team with a common opponent. See Ohio State's Big Ten rankings, number one in offense, scoring offense, running offense. Man coming out to direct it is the pass efficiency leader, Greg Fry. First down play, nothing, nothing game. Ohio State second possession, play fake. Downfield throw, Graham is open and he's on the run. Jeff Graham, the fastest Buckeye, is on the run. He could take it the distance. One man has an angle on him. And Graham is knocked out of bounds by Eric Ramsey down at the 11-yard line. Bobby Olive, the other wide receiver with a terrific downfield block. Ohio State freezing the Auburn linebackers with a play fake and Fry firing that bullet. And it's now positioned downfield for a 68-yard game. We came into this game talking a lot about Alexander Wright of Auburn, but Ohio State has their game breaker in Jeff Graham, who they liken to Chris Carter, who now plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. You watch him run a nice route, catches the ball, and is off to the races. So the Buckeyes. Block. Great block by Bobby Allen. Yeah, that freedom. Ohio State challenging for the first score of the game. The underdog Buckeyes at the 13-yard line. Hand off to Scotty Graham, and he takes it down inside the five-yard line, down close to the two. Those huge Ohio State blockers, Stasniak and Davidson, blasting open the right side of the Auburn defense, a huge overmatch in size. Graham, you see his numbers, 924 for the season, but more impressively, 5 for a carry. And to get 900 yards from a fullback position is awfully tough. He's only got about three plays. He is a very explosive fullback who is a natural tailback. And he's also a terrific blocker. They call him the snow cloud because he clears the way for Carlos Snow, who's the eye back as they go to Graham again. Right down, and a knockdown is made. On a second down and one play, and it looked like Auburn shut down the run for no gain. But the Tigers now backed inside their own five-yard line with 7.30 to play in the first quarter of this Hall of Fame Bowl. John Cooper and the Buckeyes threatening to take the lead. You see the numbers? Second in the nation is this Auburn defense in points allowed. Less than 11 a game. They take a lot of pride in their defense. Their spiritual leader, number 41, Quentin Riggins. They say now you nobody runs a sweep on Auburn. You got to take it straight ahead to gain ground running. Third and less than a yard. Here's the quarterback running a sweep and Fry is down to the one yard line. Didn't get in, but he gets a first down. So Fry, the quarterback, runs the option, keeps and gets down to the one yard line. And Ohio State will have it point blank range, first and goal from the one. Coming into this game, they Ohio State didn't really know if they were going to be able to get Greg Fry on the outside to run that option, but they showed right here Greg Fry with a nice fake into the line of scrimmage. He gets on the outside, has a chance to pitch to Carlos Snow, but decides to take it inside, and he stopped just short of the goal line. This Ohio State team is a tough team to defense because they come at you in so many ways, and there is the leader of that offense, Greg Fry, who can do a lot of things very well. A unique set of numbers on the board. First down, one to go on the one in the first quarter. Scoreless game. 
Ohio State power eye. Devil tight end. Snow is the eye back. He gets the pitch back. Here's Carlos Snow, and he's heading in. Carlos Snow cracks the plane, and the underdog Buckeyes have taken a six to nothing lead. Scotty Graham, the snow cloud, cleared the way. The big play, the 68 yard pass play from Fry to Jeff Graham. And now this guy sets up with that. That he's got that Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Extra point is hit up and good by Pat O'Moro. And Ohio State has taken a 7 to nothing lead over the favored Tigers of Auburn. Pat O'Moro, just sort of a strange little setup there with the Pee Wee Herman look. But here's another look at the touchdown. Carlos Snow takes the deep pit from the ice position and just powers it in for the touchdown. Hey. So Ohio State. Strikes first, and when we come back, the Buckeyes will be kicking off to Auburn. Pass play that got them down close, and then they take it in for the go-ahead touchdown, and it's Ohio State 7, Auburn nothing, with 6.50 to go in the first quarter. Carlos Snow in the end zone, a touchdown maker. Ohio State coming in here, everybody talking about them being the underdog, and being around these players all week they didn't feel like they were an underdog they felt like they if they can put it together they can play against anybody one of the things that worried Pat Dye was the fact that he thought his team would be just a little bit less sharp because of the layoff as we take a look at the touchdown play there but that happens sometimes when you take a lot of time off your passing game isn't as sharp as you would like it to be and it hasn't been on today Reggie Slack has been on but he's been plagued by a lot of drops he has he's put the ball where it had to be very interesting the way the two teams prepared though Ohio State's practices much more laid back good work ethic but Auburn's I mean it's almost like war at practice every day it really was but Ohio State they put their tough practices in while they were in Ohio and once they came down here they sort of laid back on the other hand Auburn came down here and they did their tough practices here in Tampa Amaro hits a high spinning kick downfield Alexander Wright makes it across the 30 and there he goes the kicker has a line on him and he finally knocked out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. What a burst. They say he runs a 4-2-5-40. An All-American track man, number 18. And he kicked into that high gear and just rocketed through the Ohio State coverage. 45-yard return. He can flat out fly, Don. Here he finds a crease and turns his speed on, and he's through that line before you know it. Now he's off and running. And this is just a fine play by Ohio State to keep him from going all the way. The kicker, O'Moro, got him. But the Tigers have good field position now to start their third drive. 40 yard line of Ohio State, hand off to Danley, and Ohio State comes striking, knocks him down for a gain of only one yard. Now back to the sidelines. Here's Jim. Thanks, Don. It's pretty rare these days to see a head coach not wearing headphones plugged into his coaches upstairs. Pat Dye does it. He has a graduate assistant coach, Tim Beckman, who handles wearing the headphones for him. Beckman listens to both offense and defensive coaches and then relays the information to Dye. Beckman is from Berea, Ohio, with an Ohio connection. In fact, his dad has been in the NFL, used to work with the Cleveland Browns as part of their personnel. Right now, it's Auburn going to the run, and Danley breaks it inside the 30. And Stacey Danley, a 6'3", 215-pound runner, takes it down to the 28-yard line. Just behind Jim Donovan was Pat Sullivan in the orange sweater, who is the Heisman Trophy winner. John Pat Dye is quarterback coach, 71 winner of the Heisman. An 11-yard gain on the play. There's Pat Sullivan. He was a great quarterback. And all these, Reggie Slack says, he owes him everything because he's the guy that really gets him going, taught him how to play this game. I back. Danley running hard again off the right side. Rob Selby, the right tackle, and Victor Hall, the strong tight end. They list him at 220. The Ohio State player said he used to be 220. <laughs> he's got to be 250 now. Buckeyes put the real numbers on those front line people, and they're all up around 300 in the offensive line. Auburn tends to list perhaps a little bit less than they are. 
the matchup between strength and quickness right now. It's dead even. All over there. Five eleven to go. First quarter. Buckeyes lead seven nothing. Handoff on a delayed draw goes to James Joseph, and he takes it inside the 15 yard line. So Auburn now eschews the passing game they came out with and runs the ball very well. James Joseph is just a big, tough, do everything back. He's the kind of guy that sets the tone for these running backs. He reminds me a lot of Stanford Jennings up at the Cincinnati Bengals because he can do everything. He knows all the positions. He can play fullback, tailback, and he catches the ball well out of the backfield. He was a first-team high school All-American, James Joseph, at Phoenix City up there in the Chattahoochee. Here's a pitch back now. Joseph runs again inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line on a first-down carry. The Auburn Tigers are now threatening to score a tying touchdown. Joseph's had some nagging injuries. He averaged just under five yards a carry. He was Auburn's number one rusher this season with almost 850 yards. He's a guy they say will play tough. It's hard to get him out of that lineup, but he makes all the right decisions here. He just takes his pitch back here, makes a nice cut up inside the, the end, and then just barrels ahead for extra, extra yardage. Mark Pelini, the free safety, made the tackle. Pitch back again. Auburn goes to the run. Danley with a cutback, and look at that pop. Alonzo Spellman, number 99. He's a freshman from Mount Holly, New Jersey. 6'6", 265 pounds, a linebacker. Personal foul is called on the hit. <laughs> I'm telling you, Alonzo Spellman put helmet on Danley that time. We saw him walking around on the practice field the other day. It's hard to believe he's a freshman. He looks like he could play in the National Football League right now. Yeah, you don't. Even, he doesn't have to, have to play. You could just stand him out here. He's going to scare somebody. I, he'd be the guy I'd let off the bus first. <laughs> Dead ball foul. Late hit. Defense. It's penalty half the distance from the goal line. First down. He got a late hit penalty here. You watch Danley cut back up inside. He gets tripped up a little bit here, but boy, what a hit by Spellman. Yeah, and there you can see hit. the late hit right there. Zach Dumas coming in way late on top of that pile. So Spellman made the big play for the Buckeyes. Dumas made the bad one, and now the Tigers are challenging. Slack on the rollout. He can run it. Throws to the wrong side of the, his receiver. Foster Paul. Trying to go for the ball. They tell me that Reggie Slack is the type of quarterback that never gets ruffled or rattled. Here you see the fake into the middle of the line. He's got him wide open, just throws this ball a little bit behind him. But there was an Ohio State defender between the quarterback and Chris the receiver. Gray, 86, the tight end, was wide open, but Slack couldn't get it to him. Tigers go to the run. Ohio State shuts it down to about the three-yard line. At Thomas, the nose tackle was the first man to hit the ball carrier, Stacy Danley. And there is the Golden Eagle, the mascot of the Auburn Tigers. This is where it gets tough to run in here on Ohio State. Trying to get some yardage up the middle. That might be the toughest thing that Auburn has to do all day. They do not. I mean, those guys get down. Ninth play of the drive coming up now. Third down and two from the two yard line. Third and goal play for Auburn. Having Ohio State by seven. Danley is cut down. He did angle right, though, and positions the Tigers for a field goal try, and they're ready to send out their kicker. Eisenman makes the stop. Eric Geisman right here, you'll watch him come up and make this stop a fine play. Nobody blocked him. And when nobody blocks you, you got to make a play like that. He had the opportunity and made the best of it. He's quite a story, as you know, Ahmad, from Fremont, Ohio, up by Toledo. Eisenman, one of the top amateur boxers in the country. In fact, didn't play football last year while he tried to make the U.S. Olympic team. Told us that he enjoyed fighting against Mike Tyson. The only guy in the amateurs that went three rounds with him lost on a decision in the Golden Glove National Semifinal. Well, there's been very few professionals that have gone three rounds with Mike Tyson. <laughs> That's right. 19-yard field goal by Wynn Lyle puts the first points up for the Auburn Tigers. They trail 7-3. to three. You are going to see a double-team blop right here on Thomas. 
and the ball is going to come right here. Danley running right there. Then you will see, now watch number 10 make the play. There's nobody blocking him. He has a clear shot at the runner and nails him. Derek Eisenman, the MVP of this team, and he's the spiritual leader of this defensive football team. I guess when everybody on the team knows he went three rounds with Mike Tyson, you got to respect him. He's 85 and 5 as an amateur fighter. Coach Cooper calls him the most inspirational player he's ever been around. Well, he told us last week that he may opt for a boxing uh, career as opposed to trying to play professional football. Said he'd make a lot more money. Hey, let's get up against 10 stiffs and they can set you up for a $5 million payday. Yeah, there's something about wearing a helmet that <laughs> that's a safety. Downfield hit is taken by Carlos Snow inside the five yard line. Big stick by the Tigers. Auburn getting a big hit coming down to make the play was right. Number 22, a 16 yard return by Snow. And Ohio State holding to a 7 3 lead with 2.09 to play in the first quarter goes on offense again. Championship Monday on NBC. Coming up next is the Fiesta Bowl from Tempe, Arizona. The Florida State Seminoles against the once beaten Nebraska Cornhuskers. And then it's on to the Orange Bowl in Miami where Colorado goes for a first national championship in a perfect season against Notre Dame. End up. Ohio State straight at the Auburn defense. And on the first down carry, the ball is out to about the 22 yard line. Carlos Snow was the runner. This Ohio State team, they like to use that sprint draw. They line up Carlos Snow deep in the backfield, hand it to him deep, and then let him pick a hole. He's so quick that he can run that ball, you know, one of three or different places and go off tackle, take it back to the other side. But he is extremely quick as well as being fast and picks the right hole. John Wilson was the defender who got him. Second down and seven now for the Buckeyes out of the eye set. Fry play fake and last time he did this it was a big hit downfield. Here's another one good for a first down to the 35 yard line. First down Ohio State Jeff Graham who was on the receiving end of that 68 yard play that set up the game's only touchdown. Makes the reception there good for 13 yards in a first down. Barlow made the tackle for Auburn. As a college receiver you really got to know how to play the zones. You see Jeff Graham here just run a stop pattern. And Greg Fry is a guy who doesn't have a big league arm, but he's so smart, he throws the ball extremely well. In order to play quarterback, it's not necessary to have an arm that you can throw the ball 90 yards. You just got to throw it to the right place. Graham having a good day of mine. Three receptions for 86 yards. Here's Fry looking to pitch again. Swings it out. He's got an open man on the run. It's Carlos Snow beating the defender. He's inside the 40 and finally Riggins knocks him out of bounds. They'll spot it at the 35-yard line where he stepped out. But Fry, play faking, is freezing those Auburn linebackers in the whole coverage. And that resulted in a 29-yard gain as Fry has been on target every time he's thrown the ball. He is having a fine football game so far. Nice fake here to Snow, who releases inside and then takes it right out to the flat. Makes a great catch here, but he's run down by Quentin Riggins. A lot of people thought that maybe Quentin Riggins, number 41 there, might not have enough speed to play in the National Football League, but he showed it right there by running down Snow. Greg Fry, the quarterback, has now thrown the ball four times for Ohio State, has completed all four for 113 yards. This time they go to the run. Ohio State comes in averaging 4.9 yards per rush. But Auburn's very good at shutting down the run. Ohio State with a great offensive game plan. I mentioned earlier, it's very hard to set up on these guys because they're giving you so many different formations. And what they do in the huddle, they call two plays. And when they get to the line of scrimmage, if there's an audible, it's only one play. So everybody knows what that play is. They're getting the right play against the right defense so far almost every time. First quarter almost out. Ohio State with the ball and a 7-3 lead. Hand off. Buckeyes go to the run. And it's Carlos Snow taking it inside the 30-yard line down to the 28. Bring up third down and about two. And that'll do it for the first quarter of play. Now the underdog Buckeyes win the first 15 minutes, three quarters to go. It's a seven to three game Ohio State. Hold it, ho, ho, ho. So you're gonna finally meet Cindy, huh? Tonight. 
Good. So first impressions are very important. I think. Okay. Now, imagine. Lights are low, the music's soft. Knock the door, the door opens up, somebody's out there doing this. What is this? She's got dandruff? No, you have dandruff. No. Yes, you do. I shampoo every day. If you shampoo your brains out with regular shampoo, shampoo it wouldn't matter. Your brains out? Yeah, well, so use that. Head and shoulders? Works for me, my friend. But you don't have dandruff. Exactamundo! Head and shoulders. <laughs> because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. That's me, Christina Ferrari, after I had my baby. Since then, I lost 25 pounds in three months with the Ultra Slim Fast plan. It was easy. Ultra Slim Fast is really delicious and satisfying. I'd have a thick chocolate shake for breakfast, another for lunch, then a great dinner. I love Ultra Slim Fast. It gave me back my figure, and I feel great. Now the only baby <laughs> fat in this family is on the baby. Ultra Slim Fast. Give us a week. We'll take off the weight. Shearson Lehman Hutton, where we stand January 1st, 1990. Last New Year's, we predicted a very good year for stocks. And in 1989, the stock market rose over 25%, far outperforming fixed income investments. In 1990, we believe most stocks will once again outperform fixed income investments. Talk with us. Shearson Lehman Hutton, leadership by example. because there are no unimportant parts. As we're ready to start the second quarter of the Hall of Fame Bowl, Ohio State a surprising 7-3 leader over heavily favored Auburn. Don Cricky with Ahmad Rashad. You hear about an Ohio State Buckeye, just what is it? Well, Ahmad has one. I have always wondered what a Buckeye was. I, and, and this is, they, they gave me one of these things. This is Still a Buckeye. Still don't know what it is. Well, it's a, it's not a nut, it's a Buckeye. That's it. It's like a little chestnut. <laughs> you know, one of the neat things that they do this, for every All-American that they have there, they plant a Buckeye tree and put a plaque underneath it. So that's pretty neat. Now, these Buckeyes are going to put some of those little stickers on the back of their helmets with some big hits today on offense, throwing the ball on defense with the strikes by people like Eisenman and Zizakovic. Third down comes up now for Ohio State. To open the second quarter, they need less than two yards for a first down. Ball at the 27-yard line of Auburn and diving over the top is the fullback, Scotty Graham, 5'10", 225 pounds. He looks like he might be close enough to measure. Wayne Bilesma, number 55, was on the stop. Ohio State over the years in bowl games. One thing I knew for sure when I used to ask about what a buck, Buckeye was, it was a, a guy in a silver and red uniform that would knock you out if you, if you, didn't, if you didn't look out. the nose of the ball Ohio State gets four new downs it would have brought up fourth and inches but they get there so coach Cooper has to be well pleased as coach Dye sees one of America's best defenses giving up a lot of yards early in this game one thing about Pat Dye who was a co-captain at Georgia with one of my old friends Fran Tarkenton he will never give up he gives his team the feeling that they can always win a football game what did Tarkenton tell you that's why he became a scrambler because <laughs> a bad played guard on the rollout, Fry takes a look, firing on the run, and again, Graham comes down with the ball. Jim Coletto, the offensive coordinator for Ohio State, has been saying all week, this guy is a big-time player. Jeff Graham, a junior from Dayton, Ohio. And this is just an out ball. Graham makes the cut. Now, this is where he makes the play. He goes up high for this ball. He knows he's got a defender behind him, but great hands. Pulls it down protects the ball great play by Jeff Graham they're working on Corey Barlow he was the corner trying to defend against Graham there Graham's up against him again as Ohio State has another first down and a seven to three lead early in the second quarter draw near side Carlos Snow takes it down to the nine yard line they say they call Scotty Graham the snowplow but that time 
Joe Stasniak was out front, and Carlos Snow just latched on behind him and ran him for all he was worth. Watch number 79 coming around here. That's Stasniak lead this play, and Snow just gets right in behind him, and gets that positive yardage. These Ohio State linemen shouldn't have numbers. They should have addresses. These guys are building. <laughs> you know, one of the things, you know when you're getting old, Stasian, I came up to me during the course of the week, and he said, oh, Ahmad Rashad, the host of Friday Night Videos. <laughs> <laughs> Second down for the Buckeyes. Fry, timing throw, and the receiver is screened away. No foul. Good defense by Auburn. Greg Beatty coming off the right flank was trying to make the play. Let's go back down to Jim Donovan. Jim? All right, thanks very much, Don. If you notice, Greg Fry wears one of those shields with kind of the smoked visor in front of his face mask. I have one here that's clear. The reason he does that, Ron Hudson, their quarterback coach, doesn't want the defensive backs to be looking into his eyes. When we talked to Quentin Riggins of Auburn yesterday, he said that could be a problem because we really do like to read the quarterback eyes, and Fry's been throwing the ball well. They're not reading his eyes. As a receiver, every time I've, watched, I've noticed a guy trying to look at the quarterback's eyes, I'd run right past him. I tell you, Auburn, that's right. Better start reading the receivers here because this Graham's eating them up. Fry, deep drop. Fires a strike. Touchdown, Ohio State. As the Buckeyes are in the end zone again. Brian Stabline, a freshman receiver, number 88, comes in for the first play of his career in the least in the bowl season. And Fry throws a strike to him. He's uncovered. Jeff Graham here clears this pattern out as he runs an out ball, and Stabline just comes back around underneath. When you put a receiver like Graham in the slot, you got to be careful of that out ball. They really paid attention to that, and Stabline able to come right underneath. So a potential upset in the making as the Ohio State Buckeyes, a big underdog, extend their lead to 14 to three as freshman Stabline scores his first Ohio State touchdown. It happens every business day. Americans get up, go to work, and do what they do best. And today, more business travelers will take to the road in a car rented from Alamo than ever before. There are over 4 million miles of roads in Alamo territory all across America. And nationwide, only Alamo gives you all those miles for free, even if the territory you cover is everything east or west of the Rockies. Save your dough. For a limited time, Domino's Pizza has a New Year's deal. Two pizzas each with one topping for only $10.95. You can't get this deal just anywhere, so why go anywhere? Call Domino's Pizza on the double. We'll be there in 30 minutes or less, hot and fresh. Two pizzas for $10.95. Call Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. Nobody, 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 nobody. Offer may vary. Ever since my brother Tom got this Magnavox, 52-inch big screen TV... The, the show's gonna start. Come on. He stopped going to the movies. The picture is huge, sharp, and brighter than any ordinary TV. And I get great seats. Plus, Magnavox has a 100-watt JBL sound system. It's, a, it's the same Dolby surround sound you hear at the movies. Yeah, and I don't have to stand in line in the rain anymore. Tom, it doesn't always rain when you go to the movies. <laughs> Not anymore. Magnavox. Smart choice. Very smart. Buffalo, Cleveland, Saturday, then Denver, and Pittsburgh, the AFC Divisional Playoffs, this weekend. Um. Back in one of the fastest growing cities in America, Tampa, Florida, and there is Brian Stabline, a freshman from Erie, Pennsylvania. He just scored. <laughs> He's having a good New Year. You know, I like this college excitement. I like when, you know, it's just a, the excitement in the air and guys getting crazy when they score a touchdown like that. This is, this is really exciting. And there's the guy who's made it all possible. He's six for seven, 135 yards. Greg Farr having a great game. He was the Ohio Offensive Player of the Year at Xavier High School in Cincinnati. Threw for almost 500 yards in one playoff game against Moeller High. Moeller won the game. 
He has just been spectacular. All, every ball he's thrown has been right on the money. We're going to be going to Miami, Florida shortly for an update on the upcoming Orange Bowl. Tonight's national championship matchup with unbeaten Colorado going for a first national crown against once beaten Notre Dame. Morrow ready to kick off. Spins a short kick into the wind. And Cooley without any problem. The ball is fielded by Russell. And now while we have a moment, let's go to Miami, Florida and to Bob Costas. Bob? Don, actually the story at this moment is Jerry Glanville in Houston. Within the hour, he had a press conference in Houston sparking speculation that he might be fired or he might announce his resignation, but no. He simply said that for now he's the coach of the Houston Oilers. He hasn't spoken yet with owner Bud Adams. He expects to be back for next year. So a rather non-specific press conference for Jerry Glanville in the wake of the loss to Pittsburgh, which knocked them out of the playoffs. We'll have more at halftime. Back to you, Don. So Coach Glanville is the coach of the Oilers for now. <laughs> well, I, there are some uh, tough jobs in this world. One of them is being a head coach in professional football. Jackie Sherrill's been around their practices, or at least he was three weeks ago. And uh, Coach Glanville threw him out, I understand. <laughs> Second down and six for Auburn. Ball positioned at the Auburn 34-yard line. Tigers a favorite, but down 14 to three. State hitting hard. Steve Tovar, a freshman from Elyria, Ohio, 58, who's really come on, and 90 Rich Frimmel also on the stop. One of the things that Ohio State, or a lot of people around this game, thought that Auburn was going to be too quick for Ohio State. But with the quickness of guys like Steve Tovar, 6'4, 230 pounds, I think they're matching up quickness for quickness here. That the Ohio State defense has really played a big game. Cooper was afraid they'd be overmatched and he wanted to keep his offense out for a sustained drive to keep his defense off. Slack out ball. And there is the biggest hit maybe of the 1989-90 bowl season. Danley down as he was struck by Zach Dumas. Zach Dumas. A fellow that came to this university as a running back and said, you know, I don't like to get hit. What I like to do is hit people. And he put a knockout blow on Danley that time. Hardest tackle I've seen in years. You see this ball? Now, this he's going to get hit to just about the time that ball hits his hands. Dumas just unloads on him. So Ohio State Zach Dumas with the knockout hit and time is stopped with 12 16 to play in the half. Behind the leaves is a minivan for kids. Little flare pass out to the right. But Zumas read the play the entire way and got a running start and just rocked him. Danley's up but Auburn with fourth and four has to punt the ball back to Ohio State. Buckeyes lead 14 three a low line drive. It'll come back at him. Running it back now. The olive and he turns the corner and gets out to about the 43 yard line. Back to the sideline and Jim. Don, a tremendous hit by Dumas on Stacy Danley. You can see him right here. Danley, they just say, just had the wind knocked out of him. As you said, it was amazing to see him up and running okay, but he is okay and very, very coherent of where he is and knows that he took a wicked hit from Dumas. That's it here from the Auburn bench. Okay, he's some guy if he knows he took that hit. Most people would <laughs> come to about Wednesday. That football's a tough game. As he ran off the field, he pointed back at Zach Dillon saying, I will be back. He did? Yes. Pitch back goes to Carlos Snow. And he is up for maybe a gain of only a yard as Auburn's defense comes alive now. Inside backer Daryl Crawford, 56, was the first to make the play. Ogletree is a force, number 94, a first-team All-American. Craig Ogletree likes to rush the pass all the time. Here you see him pursuing from the opposite side. He is just, he's an excellent athlete that has a tremendous future in front of him. Ohio State coaches said every game film you look at, everywhere you look, Ogletree's there. Covers the whole field, sideline to sideline, runner and tackler. 
Second down and eight comes up for Ohio State. Fry with a straight drop. Big rush from Ogletree. He gets it away. Screens it to Carlos Snow. And Auburn is there to defend. So the Tigers with their best defensive effort of this game on consecutive plays almost make the sack. When they don't, they shut down the screen. Greg Fry with an excellent job of getting rid of this ball before Ogletree gets to him. Ogletree, the Ohio State coaches said we're going to try to always have two people on him. You see him getting double teamed right there, and he still keeps coming. But Fry does a nice job of getting rid of this ball and not throwing it away. Actually threw it to Carlos Snow. Elton Billingsley finally made the tackle, and it was for a loss. So it's third down and about 10 now for Ohio State. Graham is wide left, and they're just flat out doubling him and playing off him. They've got two people doing nothing but covering Graham. They're not even looking the other way. Here's Graham running the deep pattern over the middle throw. A diving catch, and Palmer, the tight end, might have it. It appears that he does, but it'll be short of the first down. Now the other official comes in and waves it off. Jim Palmer, senior tight end, a 250-pound blocker receiver from Loudonville, Ohio. You see Fry firing this ball over to Palmer, and Palmer sticks that right hand down, and it appeared that he made that. Well, the ball hits the ground. That's not a reception. And the official right there to call it, and here's a high snap. But the ball is punted away, hit downfield by Jeff Bowman of Ohio State. Going back for the ball is Sheen Wast, and he lets it roll, and the Buckeyes will down it at the eight-yard line. So Auburn gets back the ball, but the Tigers are a long way from the end zone. 10 12 to play in the first half. With a moderate shot and Jim Donovan, this is Don Crickey back at the 1990 Hall of Fame game at Tampa Stadium, Tampa, Florida. There was rain this morning after a beautiful week of weather. Winds have come up, they've died off a bit now, gusting as high as 20 miles an hour. But through it all, junior quarterback Greg Fry has been on target for Ohio State. Auburn trying to get his offense going, and they do on this running play. A first down carry by James Joseph, and he has the ball out across the 15-yard line to the 17, where he's tackled by defensive end Rich Fremel. This Auburn team is going to have to try to run outside the tackles. Every time they've tried to run inside, Ohio State has just snuffed them. Joseph taking that ball just a little bit wide of the tackle now they've got a little bit something going got a little room to move now second down and two now for Auburn Ohio State in the lead 14 to 3 9 35 to play in the half they, uh, Ohio State putting a lot of helmets on the ball carry and always one of the lead tacklers is number 10 Eisenman their MVP back down to Jim all right, Don, I want to introduce everybody to Eric Ahmad Rashad Ramsey, the son of Eric Ramsey of the Auburn Tigers, sitting in his mom's lap, Twalita Ramsey. All right, Twalita, tell us, and Ahmad, look at he's commenting right there on your performance so far today. Tell us why the name Eric Ahmad Rashad Ramsey. Well, I just had so much respect for Ahmad Rashad, and I thought he was a great athlete, and not only that, but a very intelligent person, and I just like him a lot. All right. Well, so they say it's the name of the 90s. Yes. I love it. <laughs> we'll second all that. We have another Ahmad Rashad. We have one in the booth, and we have a young Ahmad Rashad, son of Ahmad Rashad. Just short of the first down. A new back comes in for third and short. I'm very honored by that. I yeah, think that's very nice. My intelligence never in question. <laughs> just got a whole new trend. You could be everywhere. <laughs> like Elvis. We're everywhere in the stadium, that's for sure. And a cute little kid, huh? Oh, he's dapper. I him in practice. He's a funny little guy. Very dapper. Got some speed. He was running all over here. Ohio State on a third and short play comes very close to turning it back. We'll see what the mark is. James Joseph just piling up over the middle, picks up the first down. Tigers get it. Not by much, but they got what they needed, and so Auburn keeps its drive alive. Eisenman is a sticker. Eisenman, now his, yeah, his his job right there is just to play the running back. And when the running back tries to go up over the top, he comes up from the other side. Pitch back. Here's the electron. 
Errol Williams breaks it across the 25 yard line and gets it out close to the 30. Going to spat him down at the, about the 28. Watching uh, Derek Williams run, he really has great style. He really gets those knees up high, makes the nice sharp cuts. Here he finds the hole and it just turns on the speed. A very powerful runner. Auburn finished the year with a 9 and 2 record. Tigers were defeated by Florida State and by Tennessee. They ended up sharing the SEC championship with Tennessee and Alabama. Second down and two for Auburn. I set up back. Takes it. He's got the first down. James Joseph. 6 2, 225. Straight ahead at the Ohio State defense, and he'll move the ball out to about the 34 yard line. You see a change in this Auburn offense. One of the things that Pat Dye was worried about was his very sophisticated passing game just not being as sharp as it was during the course of the year because of the layoff at the end of the season. So now they are showing that they got a, a stable of running backs that are all very effective as he shuttles them in and out, each one of them doing a very fine job. Tigers average 3.8 yards a rush this season. Here's Slack. He's got the deep arm. Nice touch as he gets it to Joseph on a first down play. He's quickly shut down after a gain of six yards out to the 40 yard line. Eisenman again dropping back in coverage made the play. James Joseph can do it all. He is very solid at every facet of football. He runs well. He blocks well. And as you can see here, he's a very fine receiver. You see him stand right over the middle, number 10, catches the ball and barrels it forward. You say, Lamar, that Eisenman has a thumb so banged up a guy wouldn't go to work with it if he had a desk job. This guy doesn't miss a day of practice. Stanley back in as the eye back. As Slack lets it go downfield and going back at the ball. It's intercepted by Ohio State. It appeared to skip off the antenna receiver, Greg Taylor. It stayed up, and the ball was intercepted by the free safety, Bo Pelini. Mark Bo Pelini. Who's as tough as anybody out there in his career. He's had a broken jaw, broken collarbone, and a broken and dislocated shoulder. He loves it. And enjoys playing football with all those breaks. This ball here just bounces off Greg Taylor right into his hands. And Greg Taylor having a tough afternoon. That's, the, that's his second drop on the day. Reggie Slack doing everything he can do, putting the ball right there. This is a very catchable ball, but he seems to fall just as he's getting ready to make the catch. It bounces up. And Pelini makes the, the interception. So Ohio State, a surprise 14 to 3 leader, takes over the ball on the first turnover. Few people really understand. That move gets ahead for close to 10 yards before the strong safety, Dennis Wallace, number 30, knocked him down. And Scotty Graham is a load. He takes his inside handoff here, takes off outside half. He's got Snow leading the blocking for him this time, turns it upfield and just powers down the field. This is a great tandem here between Snow and, and Graham, both of them over 900 yards. This Snow is a team leader, top student, top blocker, top carrier, gives it to you every down. Now he runs it again and bangs ahead for the first down for the Buckeyes, out to the 47-yard line, where Domingo Anderson knocked him down. The Buckeyes have had some great fullbacks over the years, and. Scotty Graham is going to go down as another one of them. Rockington, they've had some great backs. Five Heisman trophies there. Jim Otis. I've had, a, had an opportunity to play with Jim Otis in St. Louis. Everything he owned had J.O. on it. <laughs> J.O. on his license plates, on his ring, on his necklace, on his ties, on his shirts. Proven he's a top back. <laughs> the 34-yard line. On the rush was Fernando Horn, a big guy who can run, number 77, and Lamar Rogers, another big guy who can run. This Auburn football team will not quit. They will keep coming at you all day. That scoreboard has nothing to do with it. They will keep coming. Here you see Fry with the inside handoff. Nice fake. He's looking downfield the entire time. Can't find a receiver, and he's dropped for a 13-yard loss by Fernando Horn. 
They're just doubling Graham on every play now at the lower right portion of your screen. That free safety is looking over that way too from the middle of the field. And they should. Really. He's starting to cheat that way. Almost a triple. Here is a straight ahead give, and there's not much there on a second and long play. Second and 22. And it's quickly knocked down at the 36 yard line by Quentin Riggins and Ricky Sutton. Jeff Graham is not only a fine receiver, but a very fine blocker. They say he's in the mold of uh, a tight end when he gets down the field. He goes down there and takes on those defensive backs, a lot like Paul Warfield used to do. One of the finest blocking receivers that I've ever seen. You mentioned Graham is a junior as a year to go, 6'2", 195. Third and long, long yardage, and they go to the draw, and here comes Snow, and he takes it across the 45-yard line of the 46. And won't be close to the first down, so Ohio State will send Bowman out again to punt. Carlos Snow, short in stature, but boy, he explodes. He's 200 pounds, but he's really strong on the top. Big chest, big arms, and just powers it through there. Been trouble with a bad knee most of the season. Didn't play against Michigan. Missed parts of three other games and still had well over 900 yards running the ball. He's one of those backs tough to figure. You watch him practice, he kind of tips around on that knee, but once the game starts, he is... Fourth and 12, and they're setting up. Nobody's coming early, so now Fry goes off the field. Timeout is called by Ohio State. Finally set Play game. Putter. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Can get apparently, hoping they jump. We still wouldn't have been close to a first down. They would have had to jump two downs in a row to get a first down on that one, wouldn't they? I think maybe there'd been a little bit of confusion on what down it was. That would have been extreme confidence to go for that one. Of course, the way Fry's been playing, they may have gotten it. So now Bowman is out. Low snap. He hits a spiral downfield. Shane Wasden has the ball for Auburn. Makes a good move, and Wasden is running in the open field. He's across the 50, cuts back, and is knocked out of the 47-yard line. Big return by Shane Wasden. A sophomore from Selma, Alabama. Auburn gets the ball back, trailing 14-3 in good field position. As watch Wasden's punt return here, a 30-yarder. Shane Wasden is a big play player. They say he was born orange and blue. His dad played for Auburn in 1957, but every game this year he has made a big play, and he starts out by having a big play right now. That punt return is a new Hall of Fame record, I think 30 yards. Yep, 30 yarder, Hall of Fame record. You got to watch for Shane Wazen, too. He has an excellent pair of hands. I was watching him in practice. I never saw him drop a ball. They're going to start pitching now. Reggie Slack rolls out. Home run ball going to the end zone. Right is there. It's picked off by Ohio State. A second interception. Bo Pelini gets them both. The free safety. So Slack tried to force it in, going to his top man. Alexander Wright, but Pelini the free safety right where he had a big goes up, screens off the receiver and intercepts a second time in the first half. Excellent defense by Ohio State. Look at there's three Ohio State players around Alexander. Someone else has got to be open. When you've got speed and a reputation like Alexander Wright, you're going to always attract a lot of attention. Here's Wright. The ball's a little bit underthrown, and it's right to number 48. Bo Pelini. Bo Pelini. There's another look. He is blanketed by Ohio State defenders. When that happens, you got to find a secondary receiver. A great second look. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. Today's game produced by Terry Eward, directed by Ted Nathanson. We have 3.09 to play in the first half. Ohio State starts out now from inside their five after the interception, leading 14 to 3. And Carlos Snow breaks it up the middle behind those huge offensive blockers. Tim Moxley, the right tackle for Ohio State, is 6-7-3-10. This is just a deep handoff. This is that sprint draw where they let Carlos Snow pick his hole. And as I said earlier, he always picks the right hole. Reminds you a lot of a, another former Ohio State running back, Archie Griffin. Same size, same kind of ability. Arch is here, an associate athletic director at Ohio State now. Second and short. 
about a yard. Ohio State back to the run. First down carry as Graham takes it straight ahead. Daryl Crawford tackled him, mentioning Moxley Ahmad, who's 6'7, 310. John Cooper said of him he was born on July 7th, 8th, and 9th. <laughs> Coach Osborne and his Huskers are getting set to go against Coach Bowden and his Florida State Seminoles. Coming up next at the Sun Kiss Fiesta Bowl. And then unbeaten and top ranked Colorado goes against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl, the national championship game in the Federal Express Orange Bowl tonight on NBC Sports Championship Monday. Right now, Ohio State standing tall up over favored Auburn. Buckeyes leading 14 to 3 with 155 to play in the first half. Barlow makes the play. Snow and Graham, that tremendous one-two punch. They got similar statistics on the day. Snow, 10 carries, 37 yards. Graham, 8 carries for 32 yards. They like to run that little quick pitch into the short side of the field, hoping that Snow can find a little crack, use his speed, and break it for the long one. Hall of Fame records in abundance here. Pellini just tied one with a second interception. Slack having trouble finding downfield receivers. While Fry on offense now is really hitting the mark, but they're going to look to run the clock with second down and 10. They go to the run and take the ball out to the 17 yard line. Game clock down to 145 and running. John Cooper spent eight years as the head coach of the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa. Well, you know, at one point in my career, he called me and recruited me, the Oregon State. He was recalling that the other day. He called me on the phone. I wasn't home, but my mom gave me the message. You had fine a few coach. You. <laughs> That's fine coach. I'll tell you one thing, if you're the opposition, you talk to him, you're liable not even to show up. He'll have you thinking these guys are going to come in on crutches. And He certainly did downplay his team. and. Carlos Snow looking to go right as the Ohio State coaches said and now have it proven to them again you don't run sweeps on Auburn. Nobody does. Quentin Riggins and Frankie Stan Kunis ran it down at Stan Kunis 29. Coach, the great one, Coach Woody Hayes. I'm out. You're talking about how he used to have that watch trick, that old watch trick of his. That's right. It, uh, I was talking to. Doug France, one of the former Ohio State players, said that Woody Hayes would call him in the office and rip his hat off, take his watch, and throw it up against the wall, and he'd walk out of there all amazed and everything. Then he found out after he graduated that Woody had about 20 or 30 of them watches in the drawer. <laughs> he said it worked when I was in college. He'd make a mistake. He wore a big game in practice. He'd stamp on his watch. And now look what you made me do to that watch I've had for years. Never seen a coach have such impact on players even long after they left the university. Jim Marshall. A player had the utmost respect for Woody Hayes. Not many coaches have done as much for their former players as Coach Hayes did over the years. Certainly, it, certainly did. He's one of those coaches that you love to play for him and you hate to play against him. So Coach Die on the sidelines, not what he's expecting. His team's with 76% wins in his nine years at Auburn. Downfield punt. Hit hard into the wind, and Wasden fields it over the shoulder. Running it back upfield. This time Ohio State has him hemmed in and loses him again. And there's Shane Wilson on the run. And finally they get him inside the 35-yard line. So after setting an Orange Bowl record with a 30-yard punt return, the previous return, I think he just broke his own mark. Big play. Shane Wasden. Nice run. He, nice block right there. Now he turns the ball upfield. There's a good. We avoids the tackler right there. Now takes off down the field. New Hall of Fame bowl record, a 34-yard return. Shane wasn't continuing to break records here today. So it'll be first down Auburn when we come back. Finally, there's a minivan for kids with parents. And let's face it, we all have them. Yeah. The all-new Oldsmobile silhouette. Talking radical concept here. Your own window seat. Room for lots of things. And neat stuff to keep your parents from bugging you on long trips. Besides, silhouette makes them look cool. Right. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. Ready, dudes? 
and they need all the help they can get. Yeah. This is the new generation of wolves. In the fading light, a cold blue haze, gay laughter, sad cries, these mark our day, the touch. The first true test of marriage can be suffering through a cold together. <coughs> you took your cold medicine, and he took his. Uh, here, keep the box. You're not sneezing. How come you're not sneezing? You make discoveries. <coughs> you're not coughing. How come? And you see things you never saw before. What have you got over there, anyway? United, it's the Big Ten versus the SEC. Ohio State in front of favorite Auburn, 14-3. Auburn has had problems with its downfield passing game. It looks about like Slack might have to go to more of a possession passing game, some shorter routes. Well, the thing they've been successful at is running the ball outside the tackle. One of the things you don't want to do is get in a situation where you've got to throw desperation passes to Alexander Wright because he has been covered very well by the Ohio State defenders. And yeah, they've pretty much taken him out of the game after that 18-yard reception to open play. Swing pass to James Joseph. He's caught and knocked down at the 32-yard line. A very important drive now for Auburn. And time is a factor. The clock's running. It's down to 37 seconds in the first half. Auburn not calling a timeout. They have one left. 28 seconds. You see the clock ticking down. Slack looking downfield. Ohio State deep zone. Here's a throw and a catch. They get the ball to right down to the 12-yard line. And Auburn comes up now to the line of scrimmage with 18 seconds to play. Ball is spotted. They say Reggie Slack is at his best in pressure situations like this because he is unflappable. Clock starts. Slack fires. Open man. Touchdown Auburn as he gets the ball to Greg Taylor. So 5'8", Greg Taylor goes up and comes down with the ball in the end zone, and Auburn is right back in it. With 11 seconds to play in the first half, it's a 14-9 game, Ohio State. <laughs> 11 yards and a touchdown. <laughs> Win Lyle hits the point after. And it's a 14 to 10 game, so Auburn finally gets in the end zone with time almost out in the first half. Greg Taylor, who has been plagued by drop balls this first half of this game, gets a big confidence booster right here. Reggie Slack fires this one over the top of Eisenman. Eisenman now just trying to drop back in a zone, and Taylor just taking it deep. That's the way you beat his own. You move away from the man. And Reggie Slack finds Greg Taylor and hits him right in the chest with the ball. Pat Dye looking on. <laughs> he knows the play and he likes this. So does Pat Sullivan there in the red sweater right next to him. The Auburn Tigers are back into this football game. Tigers finally bite. Slack makes the strike. He was a first team all SEC quarterback as a junior. Three of his receivers were drafted in the NFL, including lawyer Tillman of the Browns. And he was recruited as a outside linebacker in defense. But in high school, he was a kid in Milton, Florida, that could play anything, but they didn't think he was a quarterback. I think those, those minds have been changed at this point. They said the first scrimmage he was in as a freshman, the minds were changed. He's been a QB ever since. So now Auburn will kick the ball off with 11 seconds left. Jim Von Weil will kick off. Pat Sullivan told me he's just like a sponge. Everything they give him, he can just absorb it, and they don't have to tell him two times. He really is a scholar when in, t in talking about the football. Reggie Slack. Brown ball hit downfield. Up back picks it up. And this will just about do it for the first half as Ohio State runs it back. Tyrone Harrison into block number 39, run the ball back, and got it to the 40-yard line. Six seconds left, so Ohio State sends out its offense. Buckeyes in the lead, 14 to 10. 
in the fame game at Tampa Florida. 70,000 tickets sold for the game. There are a lot of Ohio State colors over there, but I understand Florida, they have a lot of boosters down here in Florida. Second leading state behind uh, Ohio. It's unbelievable how much scarlet and gray is in the stands. Well, it's been a couple winters in Ohio. I think you might want to come down here in the wintertime. Fry looking to get some on the final play of the half. He hits his tight end, Palmer, and time is out as Palmer gets down to the 34-yard line. So John Cooper, with protection from the local law enforcement officers, goes off the field. On a 26-yard play, his team concluded the first half. Pat Dye going off for Auburn. Not on the scoreboard where he expected to be, trailing Ohio State 14 to 10. And Greg Fry has just really impressed everybody here at this stadium. He is having an excellent first half. And now let's go back down to Jim Donovan. All right, thank you very much, Don. But John Cooper, you hate to give up one late like that, but your team played very well in the first half. We played real hard. Our kicking game really caused us some problems. I think we had a couple guys in position. We didn't, you got to make the tackle. This is a good football team we're playing. I'll tell you what, it was important for Greg Fry to come out of the shoot quickly, and he did. Well, Greg's a good football player. You give him time, he's going to throw the ball. And how about Jeff Graham? He can catch it, can't he? All right, he certainly can. Congratulations. Had a good first half. Now go in there and get going in the second half. Thank you very much. John Cooper, his Buckeyes are up 14 to 10. And now let's go back to Don Cricky. Thank you, Jim. John Cooper, a native Tennessee, as we mentioned, played at Iowa State. He goes by General Nalen's Ten Commandments of Winning Football. Number one is the team that makes the fewest mistakes wins. His team didn't turn it over. Auburn did twice. And now with 14 to 10 on the scoreboard, here at halftime. And now to the Orange Bowl and Bob. Hundred and fifty nine yards and a touchdown. He was not intercepted. Reggie Slack seven for thirteen for seventy four yards and a touchdown. Bo Pelini, the Buckeye free safety, intercepted Slack twice. Once in a carom shot off his intended receiver. It went right into Pelini's arms. Jim Van Weil ready to kick it off. Hits the ball downfield and Carlos Snow will take it at the two. Good special team play by the Auburn Tigers and the knock out of bounds is made at the 18 yard line. NBC's Championship Monday continues today with the Fiesta Bowl. The fifth ranked Florida State Seminoles go against sixth rated Nebraska in a rematch of the thrill thrilling high scoring 1988 Fiesta Bowl. Then tonight it's a battle that will determine the national championship as the nation's only undefeated team the top ranked Colorado Buffaloes go against the fighting Irish of Notre Dame rated number four going into the Orange Bowl. Today and tonight, the best in the bowls are on NBC Championship Monday. Ohio State ready for the first play from scrimmage in the third quarter. Play fake. Fry downfield throw. It's too high for Jeff Graham, who all game long has been going way up and coming down with it. That was too high. John Wiley, the free safety, a first team all Southeastern Conference player for Auburn, was defending. 
a thing about Jeff Graham, he's got such range and leaping ability that even though Wiley was there to try to make the play, you throw the ball up a little high and Graham goes up and makes the catch. This time, that just wasn't the case, but you're covering a guy that can jump like that. Boy, he can give you problems all day. Carlos Snow needs 18 more yards to have a thousand rushing this season. And off. Uh, Straight ahead. Scotty Graham runs the ball. Let it go to Snow. Graham leaves the blocking, and Carlos Snow is thrown back. As the Auburn fans are fired up now, and their defense has ignited them. Quinton Riggins, number 41. Man who made the play. That Quentin Riggins, boy, he puts some hidden surface here. If you watch the right side of your screen, number 41 on Auburn, watch him put the lick here on Snow. That is a picture perfect form tackle right there. And he has made plenty of those, the leading tackler on this football team. Third down now for Ohio State. Greg Fry and the Buckeyes need eight. Time a pattern and snow can't hold on. So the Auburn defense sends Ohio State's offense off the field, three downs and out to open the second half. And Auburn should get very good field position as Ohio State's Bowman will be putting into a gusting wind. Ohio State has had problems in the first half trying to. a little extra duty there but as I was saying earlier Ohio State has had problems covering punts in the first half Bowman picks it up on the one hop hits it downfield not very far into the wind and the ball will be downed on the Ohio State side of the field well the best thing they could do is kick that ball away from Shane Washington because he has been Boy. the hot punt returner here today Set an orange ball record with a 30 yard return and next punt return he broke his own mark running the next one back 34 yards did Washington so here comes Auburn, trailing by four with its first possession of the second half. They say Wazen has had a big play in every game that Auburn has had this year. And when I watched him practice, he, he's a pretty good receiver, too. Great hands. All the speed on the right flank now. Near to the line of scrimmage. Number 18, Alexander Wright. Auburn goes to the run, and Ohio State is there to shut it down. Short game, maybe two on the play. Stacy Danley ran the ball. Judah Herman, an inside linebacker, made the stop. Auburn has not been successful trying to run against this Ohio State defense up the middle. They've got to run outside the tackle or throw the ball to be successful. Wide right is Greg Taylor. Alexander Wright at the top of your screen. Second and a long seven. Slack with a nice pitch. Stanley has the ball. The zone defense comes up and gets him, but it looks like Stacy Danley's firing up ahead for an Auburn first down. He had to get inside the 39-yard line, and he appears to have the spot there. He's to the 38. So Auburn possibly challenging here for a go-ahead score. And Dantley, just a little stop pattern. Nobody around him takes the ball and tries to turn up field. You see Eisman coming there, getting involved on the hit. That was a very good play. Keeps that drive alive. And up to Dantley. He breaks it for the moment. Almost got away. He was caught from behind by number 10, Derek Eisenman. The much talked about amateur fighter who went against Tyson in the Golden Glove semifinals, national semifinals. Don, Stacy Danley, I'm telling you, when you get hit the way he got hit in the first half and continue to play in a game like this, I'm, it, it really takes something. I mean, most guys, you get hit like that, the, game, the day's over. You start thinking about the next game. If you can think at all for a while. <laughs> That's true. He really got blasted but bounced up, and Danley gets the call again. As Auburn, with some very quick offensive line blocking, is taking it straight ahead at Ohio State, and Danley is weaving his way. And the Tigers now have the ball inside the 25-yard line of Ohio State. Buckeyes lead the game 14 to 10. That's how it stood at the half. And Pat Dye said when it gets to going gets tough, Stacy Danley gets tougher. And you can see here that he is really running this ball hard. Danley was a first-team All-Southeastern Conference player in 1988. And, uh, and there's the electron busting it, Daryl Williams at 5'9", 190. 
So Auburn, which came out throwing the ball to start the game and was not effective, now goes to the power game and takes it right at Ohio State. Well, what Auburn does is they've got they give you a change of pace. They run Danley at you, pound and pound and pound at you. Then all of a sudden they come back with Daryl Williams, who has speed and quickness, so you really can never set in as a defensive team to try to stop them. They got too many guys coming at you too many different ways. He's the electron, the weapon, as he describes himself, at the top of your screen, a wide receiver, Casey, but they go back to the run. James Joseph. Behind the right side, Rob Selby and Mark Rose lead the blocking. <laughs> and Joseph is getting a, a hand there from the from the crowd, asking for one first. So Auburn really gets it going now as junior James Joseph. He was a first-team parade All-American, one of the most recruited Auburn Tigers. Auburn with first down and goal. Hand off. Darrell Williams east to the three yard line. But Coach Dye got his game plan together at halftime. It's run, 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 and on every down, they're going for positive yard. Coach Pat Dye there. You see Pat Sullivan signaling in the play. There in the orange sweater. Auburn trailed in this game. Seven to nothing, seven to three, 14 to three. Tigers down now 14 to 10. They're heavily favored. They could go ahead. Hand up, tipping to the outside and taking this hard hit was Stacy Dan, late cornerback Vinnie Clark, number seven, a junior who's had trouble with deep coverage this year, but as an excellent open field tackler, makes that play. You see all those Buckeyes that they put on the helmet? They give those Buckeyes for excellent play. John Cooper getting a little bit nervous. <laughs> He's biting his fingernails down at this part, this end of the field. So the Buckeye defense up against it now. It's third down and goal for the Auburn Tigers. They spread two receivers left. Roll out. Slack can run. Looks to throw. There's the pitch. He's down to the goal line, and it's a touchdown for Auburn. Greg Taylor with the reception for the score. His second touchdown of the game, and Auburn goes in front for the first time with 9.50 to play in the third quarter. Greg Taylor on a just a little inside route, and Reggie Slack just just has a little bit of room to get that ball in there and just fires it hard. So Greg Taylor, who had a couple of drops in the first half, makes up for it. He's got two touchdowns on the day. The extra point is up and good, and Auburn has a three-point lead. Some people think only foreign companies build quality cars. Now, according to an independent survey, an American car... Greg Taylor, number 16 right here, lines up, brings it down here in motion, just pushes the defense this way, and then reverse spins out, and Reggie Slack puts that ball right on him. See him push it up the field. Now a little reverse spin out. Here comes the ball. Touchdown, Auburn. Nicely done. Really was. Slack had a threat it. So the Auburn Tigers take the lead for the first time in the game. They have a 17 to 14 lead with 950 to play in the third quarter. Greg Taylor is a junior from Opelika, Alabama, and that was his fourth touchdown catch of the season. He had two in the regular season, two today. He had a little bit of a rough start today, but Reggie Slack showing a lot of confidence and him still throwing him the ball and he turns uh, into a, a couple of big plays. Slack's completed his last five passes and two of them for touchdowns. Greg Taylor, who caught the touchdown pass, was a top high school quarterback. Switched to wide receiver. The kickoff by Van Weil, powered downfield from the five-yard line. Carlos Snow runs it back. He's across the 30, not done until he gets all the way out to the 38-yard line. Back down to the sidelines, here's Jim. 
up here at the uh, Auburn Tiger mom section, I guess. Everybody's a lot happier right now. I'm sitting with Reggie Slack's mom, and her name is Ethel. Boy, Reggie's playing well now. Thank you. Are you nervous watching him play? Sometimes I do, and sometimes I'll be all right. <laughs> He's doing okay. I want to also turn here. This is Betty Danley, Stacy Danley's mom. And, of course, Stacy took a wicked hit earlier in the game, but he told me down there, I just got the wind knocked out of me. Well, thank God for that. <laughs> all right. Everything okay now, though, huh? Everything's doing fine. All right. So from the mom section here with the Auburn Tigers, things are great because their Tigers are up by three. Don? Thank you, Jim. Here's a handoff as the Ohio State Buckeyes go wide with Scotty Graham running the ball. He gets across the 40 and a first down carry head for four. I don't know if Mrs. Slack is nervous, but Reggie's got that Ohio State defense nervous at this point. He certainly does. Now here's Ogletree. This is a guy they're always worried about. He almost makes the tackle. He's almost in every single play. He is. <laughs> and often is on the stop. Jim Donovan find any more mod with shots down there? That made my day. Eric Hamad Rashad Ramsey, son of cornerback Eric Ramsey of Auburn. Second down and four arises now. Fry with a quick drop, stands in, hires a strike, good for a first down as he has his man to midfield, and that's the super catcher, Jeff Graham, who came off the flank to get it. Jeff Graham now with five catches for 103 yards today. Watch number 74. If you can see the left part of your screen, you didn't get a chance to sing, but Tim Moxley, a fine job on Ogletree, just rode him to the ground, enabling the quarterback to have time to throw this ball to Graham. Great job by Moxley. Ohio State looking to come from behind for the first time today, trailing 17-14. Dante Lee runs the ball, but not very far as Mike Campbell, a down lineman, comes in along with Quentin Riggins to make the stop for the Tigers of Auburn. Riggins 41 is the guy pro scout should look at as a strong safety possibility. Tremendous leader, the kind of guy you want in your team. Not big as a backer, he's 5'11", 208, but a tremendous tackler. A second-team All-American, a first-team All-Southeastern Conference player. I've found in my playing career that guys that size are the ones that really put the hurt on you. They explode on you. He said his favorite player is Mike Singletary, and he's playing like Singletary today. The kind of guy that makes a football team better just be, being on the roster and around it every day. Here's a throw downfield, and on a second and ten play, Bobby Olive scrambles as best he can, but he'll be short of the first down, bringing up third and about two for the Buckeyes. Elton Billingsley, an outside backer, finally ran him down. Watch number 94 being blocked by 79. He just gets blocked again, but a nice inside move here, but a fine open field tackle on Bobby Olive, preventing him from getting the first down. Bobby Olive, looking good from Atlanta, Georgia. Third down and two for Ohio State. Ryan, the option, going to take it himself. And the junior quarterback, 6'2", 195 pounds, puts his shoulder down and gets four new downs for Ohio State with 6.53 to play in the third quarter. And Auburn in the lead, 17 to 14. You got to like this Ohio State offense. They come at you all different kinds of ways, as we mentioned at the top of the game. They not only throw the ball, run the ball, but in Fry, he's an excellent option quarterback also. Jeff Graham just set a new Hall of Fame receiving record. Five receptions, 103 yards. Fry with 13 touchdown throws this season, seven interceptions. The top passer in the Big Ten from an overall standpoint. Here's a downfield pass again. Throwing it over the middle, he makes a connection with Donnie Lee. And he's down to the 32-yard line. Knocked down by inside backer Quentin Riggins, 41. Number 79, Joe Stasiak is the best offensive lineman, and this is why. Watch him work on Ogletree. He's still right there with him the entire time. And if he can handle Ogletree, he'll be able to play in the National Football League with very little problem. Stasniak, also an academic All-American. 
Second down and about five. Fry goes with that option again. Takes it down to the 30-yard line. Ohio State able to stabilize Auburn's defense by giving them a lot of different step uh, sets. A.C. Ogletree constantly pursuing the ball. Goes all the way to the other side. There's a, another fellow that does that quite well in the National Football League. His name is Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> Runs the plays down from the backside. Ogletree known as Tree to his teammates. You see a Sporty News All-American projected as a very high NFL draft choice. Fry throws and somehow threads it in the tight end Jim Palmer. And they're saying he didn't have possession of the ball. John Cooper saying he had the ball and it came out after he hit the ground. Taking another look at it. See Fry looking at the, looking for the tight end the entire time. Fires it over the middle. No the Paul. ball he never caught that ball It went right through his hands. That's just a second look as of course there's no replay in college football. So now the Buckeyes break the huddle. They're going for it on fourth down. Third quarter. 5-0-3 to play in it. Fourth down and they need three. A long three. Fry out pattern. He's got his man. It's a first down on the out ball. Thrown to Scotty Graham out of the backfield. So Graham's first reception comes at a critical time. A very good call by Ohio State. While everybody's looking at Graham and the tight end, they sneak out Scotty Graham over in the flat and a very nice throw by Fry. Coach Cooper not quite happy. They didn't see his call for a timeout. I think he maybe thought they had the wrong play called. That's getting us worked up in here watching them. That's right. They had two plays called in the, in the huddle. And I'm certain that Fry probably audible to the one that worked. First down. Fry with that deep drop again. And he's taken off. Heading for the 12th man. He bails out but takes a strike before he does from Billingsley. Hit him inbounds. The quarterback coach of Ohio State is a very good one. Ron Hudson who was at Notre Dame. He said they really load up Fry. He's a very good student, and they give him two plays most every down, and he makes the connection then at the call. It was a very good selection here. He can't find anybody open. It just takes off running. Good decision to get out of bounds there because he was going to take a lick. Game clock down to 4.50 in the third quarter. Ohio State trailing after leading at halftime. Buckeyes down by three. Second down and six. To the run, Donnie Lee, a freshman from Dayton, Ohio, who's averaging over six yards a carry in his first year at Ohio State, has cut down for virtually no gain, stopped on the play by defensive end Lamar Rogers. 91. Uh, he's the guy they bring in for the change of pace for Ohio, Ohio State. Extremely quick and fast and very elusive, but he's brought down this time. A game breaker type runner. Comes in for Carlos Snow. Fry, who checks out every receiver on virtually every passing down, ready to throw now. It's third down and a long six. Again, the deep drop. Here comes the rush, and the Tigers sweep him under. Back at the 34-yard line. Out of field goal range. Ogletree, it's only a matter of time. He's like one of those guys that, yep, I'm going to get you. I might not get you now, but I will get you soon. And there's a nice little outside move. He goes all the way around, a little stunt there, comes all the way around, rushes up the middle, and makes a fine play on Fry. Is Ogletree a very soft, quiet-spoken guy off the field, but on the field, he is a monster. Fourth and 18 for Ohio State now. A lot of good ones come out of Georgia, and that's where Coach Dye went to get Ogletree out of Barnes, Barnesville, Georgia. Ogletree, 6'2", 235-pound senior. Coach Dye knows a lot about Georgia, doesn't he? That's right. He was co-captain of that Georgia team in 57. He played professionally as a guard for the Edmonton Eskimos for two years in the Canadian Football League. Thought there better be a better way to go than playing offensive line in the cold so he came down and started coaching was at East Carolina 
During a nine year career, he really learned his coaching under Bear Bryant, nine years at Alabama with the Bear. So the big thing you learn from Bryant, the game comes down to blocking and tackling. The team that does it best wins. Almost a getaway snap, but a nicely done job by Bowman, who hits it downfield. And the Buckeyes can't keep it in. It'll come out to the 20. Jeff Bowman hitting a beauty, and he had to go high to get that snap. He's had some tough snaps today, two high ones, and one was a one hopper. He feels this ball with one hand. A great play. That's why you got to have a punter that's, that's an athlete back there. Got to be able to get over there and get that ball. And this is a very good punt. They had a chance to lock Auburn back inside the five yard line, and they just let the ball go. And he's probably as frustrated as anybody else here in this stadium. So Auburn has a three point lead, and they get the ball back. Shearson Lehman Hutton, where we stand. Down here. A couple of guys that said, was well working that time. Year to check on your lane game. That's what all gives out a reward, and the Hall of Fame committee does that. Bob Sutton, Jim Kimes Jr., and now as they look to throw, the downfield pitch is again a strike. Reggie Slack. Aaron it right out. None of this out pattern stuff, the short dump offs. He's firing into the defense. And Alexander Wright comes down with it for a 13 yard gain. Alexander Wright, one of the finest receivers that I've ever seen in college, really burst off the cut. And that ball is right there on target. They have a very sophisticated passing game. And this young fella here is quite a story. He didn't play football till his senior year in high school. And he is really developing to one of the finest receivers around. That 4 2 speed doesn't hurt. Oh, and that 24 yards of catch doesn't hurt either, as he'll be up for the draft next April. The run by Williams takes the ball out to the 37 yard line. See Reggie Slack off to a slow start. Now he can't miss. Of those first 10, though, he had four or five of them dropped on him. He, he has been sharp the entire day. That's a misleading Good statistic. Good point. He did have drops. He really likes to go deep, but here is a sack by Ohio State. Shreko Zizikovic. Easy for me to say. But he's played a terrific game. zizikovic has been in on play after play. Now, we have talked about the intensity level being taken up another notch by Auburn, but Ohio State is staying right with them. Here you see Zizikovic coming in and making the play on Reggie Slack. And Reggie Slack is being walked off the field here. Well, that's not a good sign for the Tigers. No, it isn't. He was really dropped on his head when Zizakovic made that sack. So the backup, Frank McIntosh, comes in, has very limited playing time, only threw 10 passes this year, completed three, one for a touchdown. A junior from Camden, Alabama. Zizakovic, who made the knockout sack, is from Western Ontario, Canada, for Ohio State. Third and long, tough down, they go to the draw, and they give it to Danley, and he breaks it, and Danley has a first down. McIntosh coming in with no time to warm up. So in their wisdom, the Auburn coaches go to the draw run, and Danley makes a 16-yard gain on third and 14. Just a great call, Don. As you mentioned, no time to warn him up. So what do you do? You hand the ball off to Danley, and Danley makes some fine moves after he's hit and goes for the first down. Reggie Slack back into the game. Reggie ready to go again. Out for just one play. First down, Auburn. Tigers lead 17-14. Williams trying to break off the pile. Can't get wide. Tovar was on the stop. Number 58, Steve Tovar. At halftime, Ohio State was a 14 to 10 leader. Auburn scoring its first touchdown of the game with just 11 seconds to play in the first half to make it 14 10. Then the Tigers, with a sustained drive, took it in. A second touchdown connection from Reggie Slack to Greg Taylor. They lead in the third quarter as time is almost out. Slack. Last play of the quarter throws the out ball and it is caught by Herbert Casey. 
Reggie Slack just right on the money with that ball. Actually, he pumped to try to throw the ball over the middle. Nobody opened, and then reset and fired it out to Herbert Casey. Herbert Casey, the weapon, will be back after these messages from your local station. Alonzo Spellman, he's 6'6", 265 pounds. He's a freshman, but watch how he comes at this quarterback. They figure this guy is certain to be an All-American before his career is over, and he, Reggie Slack fires the ball out to another fella who will probably has a chance to be an All-American before his career is over. That's Herb Casey self-proclaim the weapon. I said, well, I, I don't know if I'm going to call you the weapon until you show me something. Right now, you're just, you're just a pop gun, kid. <laughs> He's become one of my favorites. I've watched him all week and hung around with him a little bit. And they think, the Auburn coaches, he has a chance to become a great player. Sophomore playing his first season for the Tigers. Auburn was 7-0 at Jordan-Hare Stadium this year, their home field, where they play before over 80,000. About 85,000 a game packed Jordan-Hare, and it sold out every game. For that Bama game, the Auburn fans gave him the Tiger Walk. Line the, line the streets as the players file, single file from their dormitory into Jordan-Hare Stadium. What a thrill it must be to play in front of 80,000 people. <laughs> Auburn's a 6-0 team when leading after three quarters. Here is a pitch back, and it's run Good yardage by Darrell Williams after he was knocked down. Let's go down to Jim Donovan. All right, thanks very much, Don. I'm with Coach Pat Dye's Alabama State Trooper Escorts, I guess. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing it 11 years. Is this uh, what you would call sort of prestigious service, uh, being able to do this, or a lot of other state troopers want to do this uh, task? Yes, sir. Very special. <laughs> All right, tell me this. On game day, I know that you guys handle all the security for the team, but also in a home game, you kind of escort Coach Dye from his home to the game. That's true. We, do, we go out, pick him up, and bring him into his office and stay with him the entire day. All right, well, you're doing a good job today and have him in the lead. Let's go back upstairs. And as we go back to live action, Zizekovic again runs down a tackler. Shreko Zizekovic, the Canadian player from Ontario, is down after making a tackle for a loss in the backfield of Daryl Williams of Auburn. I'll tell you what, those officers find out that Donovan's from Ohio. They may be escorting him out of here. He might be let out of here in cuffs. <laughs> That's right. Timeout while Zizakovic is attended to. I've made up my mind. I'm going to do it. Why shouldn't I? I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror every morning. So before I lose another hair, I'm going to the doctor. I know doctors have treatment programs that are proven to work. More guys are trying them every day. I'm not bad now, but I wouldn't mind looking better. Your doctor can really do something about hair loss. So see your doctor or call this toll-free number. Users of ordinary nasal sprays will do almost anything to keep the spray up in their nose where it can work. Morning, Morgan. Which is why so many people now use Sinex Ultrafine Mist. It's twice as fine as ordinary sprays, so its medicine goes up and stays up to give you the best relief possible. You don't have to stand on your head to get relief. Just get Sinex Ultrafine Mist. Nighttime falls on another business day. And tonight, some business people will rest a little easier. Because helping to protect their products, their property, their people, is an independent insurance agent who compared the options and recommended Kemper, the company that's been coming through for more than 75 years. Kemper Insurance, because the bottom line is your peace of mind. In the midday sun, a gentle breeze, the embrace of white eyes, remember these, the touch, the feel. The fabric of our lives, the touch, the feel, the fabric of our lives. Right here, number 96, Reco takes a little shot in, to the small of his back and 
He walked off the field, so that's a good sign. There you see him sitting on the sideline. Now third and 11, they get slack. He gets away. Here comes the blitz again, and he gets it downfield for a connection short of a first down. And that's your man, Namad Wazden, who came back at the ball like Belitnikov to make the play, but he's short of the first down and slack. Houdini getting away out of trouble there. He was caught twice. I have been around Shane Wazden all week. I have not yet, I have yet to see him drop a ball. That is an excellent route. You see the way he comes back to the quarterback. He's just got excellent hands, knows where he is on the field. You know, this, this young man can play, and they're going to go for this first down. Trying to put a knockout punch on. Buckeyes dig in on D now. They've given up 57% completions over the season. Here's the out ball. It is taken by Wright, and he sprints ahead for an Auburn first down on a fourth down play. He's to the Ohio State 24-yard line. Coach Dye's liable to get in there and hit somebody. In Coach Dye's ready to go. He's fired up, and Reggie Slack just cool under pressure finds his ace. Alexander Wright and if you watch Alexander Wright make this catch track men cannot catch footballs like this watch the way he works with his hands just snatches it out of the air and takes off upfield for the first down Hobart on the tackle now the pitch back as Auburn goes to the run Stacy Danley takes it down to the 21 yard line a gain of almost five yards on a first down carry Rich Frimmel 90 was on the stop along with Eisenman Game clock is running. 12.25 to play in the 1990 Hall of Fame game at Tampa, Florida. Don Crickey with Ahmad Rashad and Jim Donovan. As Auburn, down in this game 14-3, has now rallied to score 14 unanswered points and take the lead, looking for more. AC is wide right. Here is a slant run by Danley on a third, second down and sixth play. He got four. Now let's go back to the sidelines, Jim. Don, over here on the Buckeye sideline, Shreko Zizakovic took a helmet to the back and is expected to get right back into that Buckeye defense very soon. He might be their most valuable player on defense in this game. Zizakovic's played a great game. Now he's back out. Yeah, he, that, that little back problem is not going to stop him from playing in this game. 6'5", 250-pound senior. Third down comes up for the Tigers of Auburn. The Buckeyes dig in on D. Slack rolling out can take it himself for the first down. He's to the 10-yard line. Victor Hall, the tight end, with a big block on the play. John, the thing about this, where's Reggie Slack here making a nice naked bootleg here? He runs out. He doesn't have anybody in front. He can either throw the ball to the tight end or take off for the run. He takes off and picks up that first down. But talking about this Auburn football team, they are so deep in talent. And if you have talent here on this team, you will play. They put a lot of players running in and out of the game. They can all go. And here is Danley. He's caught knocked down. There's a Kovic on the play. Hemmed him in. Tovar made the stop. You know, Pat Dye says that in putting a lot of players in that he can keep his team playing at that very high level for the entire 60 minutes. That's one of the neat things about you know when you go to a university and you got a lot of talent a lot of times you don't get a chance to play because you're sitting behind a senior or a, a upperclassman but on this team if you have the ability to play you will play. 14th player of the drive coming up here Amato, as they have the ball inside the 10 yard line on second down and eight. Auburn with the ball on a three point lead. Reverse. This is the speed man. Alexander Wright eludes the tackle. Jumps over another and gets down to the five yard line. A lot of east and west running but only a three yard pickup south. <laughs> when you get that speed you get in that long stride like that it's very hard to turn it back up field here you see Alexander Wright coming around on this reverse he's got to lose some ground here to try to get around Alonzo Spellman and right here just nowhere to go so he goes up might have did a little long jumping too with that track career I think he does every event there is including the 400 meters third down arises now for Auburn 930 to play 
They're down, and the Tigers need four. Slack calls his own number. He's going in. Reggie Slack, who's thrown for two, now runs for one, and Auburn opens up a 23 to 14 lead. to extend Auburn's lead to 10 points, and he does. So the passing of Greg Fry will determine what Ohio State can do to get back in this game. They got to come out throwing after the kickoff. Reggie Slack here on a quarterback draw. He told me that his hero was John Elway. He really likes John Elway, and that's just the type of thing that John Elway does. So Auburn has outscored Ohio State to take a 10-point lead. To understand Asia, you have to understand its customs, its mystery, its people. You have to know what makes a good impression and what offends. For over 40 years, we've been learning about Asia. So in addition to our convenient schedules, we can give you something no other U.S. airline can. The knowledge that comes after 40 years of helping people do business in Asia. Some heart problems are difficult to detect. But this machine is making a difference. It lets doctors see inside even the littlest hearts to provide the treatment that saves lives. This kind of innovation is typical of Siemens, where our 23 coast-to-coast -coast research and development centers for electronics and electrical engineering are helping to take steps toward a better tomorrow. We are Siemens. Today, more people than ever are getting a kick out of this hot shot. Interstate batteries hit the road fast with all the cranking power and reserve energy you need for even the worst curves in the weather. And Interstate has twice as many dealers than any other battery company in America, so you're never left stranded. For an Interstate battery dealer near you... All you got to do... Come home to the best in college football. The Kodak Hula Bowl spotlights Notre Dame quarterback Tony Rice, Air Force Field General D. Dowis, NCAA all-time leading receiver Terrence Mathis, and the nation's top senior All-Americans. The Kodak Hula Bowl, January 13th on NBC Sports World. Auburn rallying from a 14-3 deficit with 21 straight points. Al's taken command of the Hall of Fame Bowl. 24-14, but a long time remaining in this game. 9.22 left to play. And Ohio State's top-rated passer in the Big Ten, Greg Fry, is going to come out pitching after this kickoff. Well, Don, in talking, they want to move up in the national rankings. So they feel like if they can come in here and, and put a foot down, they may get a chance to move up a couple notches. They came in as the ninth-rated team in the country, Auburn. Deep men back for Ohio State as Jim Van Weil is ready to kick off for Auburn. Brother Hale Van Weil was the kicker for Notre Dame. He drills it downfield, and Carlos Snow will run it back. Buckeyes need big plays. And Auburn gets one on special teams. Coming down to make the play was Wright. Also on the stop for Auburn was Garner. 46 Garner, first hitter. We'll be back in a moment. Yea, when I was a child, I spake as a child and acted as a child. But yea, when I became an adult, I put away childish things, those toys of youth, which though they runneth fast and giveth pleasure to the soul, yet left no room for family. The Mitsubishi Galant Sports Sedan. It's not only fast and gives pleasure to the soul, it leaves plenty of room for family. Yea. For added pleasure, factory to dealer incentives can save you up to $1,500. Bo knows football. Bo knows baseball. Bo knows basketball, too. 
Bono is tennis? No. Bono wins. Bo, you don't know Diddley. The 1990 Hall of Fame Bowl is brought to you by Mitsubishi, bringing you a full line of award-winning automobiles. With Ahmad Rashad and Jim Donovan, this is Don Crickey back at the Hall of Fame Bowl. Ohio State down by 10 after leading 14 to 3, and the Buckeyes. Play fake and Fry's ready to throw. Open man. He connects to Snow who loses the ball. It's an incomplete pass. Auburn had it well defended. Riggins was on the hit. Let's go down to Jim Donovan. Thanks, Don. I'm with Bob Sutton, who is the chairman of the Hall of Fame Bowl Committee. I'd say this Big Ten SEC marriage has been pretty good in this game today. Oh, it's been terrific for us. And, uh, you know, to have Auburn behind and then come back is great. And Ohio State's played a great game. We got nine minutes left. It's not over. Well, we're a long way from being out of the woods in your Bulls' fourth year. You got to be thrilled. Well, we're thrilled. We're thrilled with the, with the relationship with you guys, and the stands are filled. We really are having a good time. Thanks for all your hospitality. Back up to you, Don. Okay, Jim, we're set to go for the second down and ten play, and they go to the run. And Carlos Snow does some good work breaking tackles and getting head ahead for a gain of close to six yards. Finally tackled by Riggins and Billingsley, two Auburn linebackers. Bob Sutton, the chairman of this bowl, one of my favorite people in the world, but my daughter loves him even more than I do. Every time she comes down here, it gives her a big old stuffed animal that's bigger than her. <laughs> you, I don't know how you're going to get that home, that big tiger you can. Third down, big down for Ohio State. 8.35 to play in the game. Clock is running. Fry. Steps into the sunlight, makes the throw, it's incomplete. Palmer is tight end, was covered very well by Elton Billingsley, number 47, who quit the team after the first game and then has to be reinstated. He was disappointed he wasn't a first string player at that time. Coach Dye took him back. This is a situation you don't want to get in against Auburn where you've got to throw the football. Now all of a sudden you just turn those quick big fellas loose up front. They're going to put a lot of pressure on you. One thing though, we haven't seen many holding calls. No, we haven't. Fake play, but it's not going to work. Auburn defends it. John Cooper talked about they fake the, the punt. They punter a signal of snap over his head, which wasn't hard to sell Auburn now because he almost had one over his head in a previous punt. But then the up back tried to run the ball and didn't get very far. Zach Dumas was hemmed in and cut down well short of a first down. So Auburn takes over the ball in deep, deep into the Ohio State end of the field inside the 35 yard line. Well, they certainly faked me out because I'm right now looking at this, the, the punter back there. I'm following the entire way. Meanwhile, the ball has snapped to the up back who takes off around the end. They call that play the Bummerowski. And I'd say that the way it ended up, it certainly is a bummer of a play. Well, they named in honor of Bum Phillips, a great favorite of John Cooper's. Brother Tom, every time he tried to see what he was doing. play. This guy pretends like the ball is snapped over his head. It's snapped to this player right here who hands it underneath to Zach Dumas, who takes off around the end, and everybody on Auburn tackles him over here. <laughs> there it is. Watch him. Puts it right between his legs, Dumas. Now we've got a live action as Reggie Slack stands in. He wants more. He's almost picked up, but it's a completion down to Greg Taylor, and he has a first down for Auburn at the 20-yard line of Ohio State. So a trick play backfires. Ohio State needing to go into the bag of tricks to try to get back in this game. Watch guys let it 14 to 3, let it the half 14-10. Now trail Auburn 24 to 14. Well, John Cooper told us if they got in a spot that they'd try to run this play, hoping they could take advantage of the over-aggressiveness of Auburn. But that time, it just didn't work. 
Reggie Slack one hot QB him out. He's completed his last 10 passes, two of them touchdowns. Pitch back to Danley, open field, and Danley heads inside the five and all the way down to the three-yard line. Big rangy runner with that big stride, eating up yards with every one of them. Going right through the Ohio State defense up the middle for a 17-yard gain. And this is what John Cooper was worried about, letting these guys off to the races. You watch Danley, he's got a very deceptive stride. Looks like he's not running very fast, but when you look at how quick it took him to get 17 yards, you realize he's got some speed. Good line blocking up front. Good line, good blocking by the wide receivers also. On first and goal, Slack throws it, and it's a touchdown for Auburn as he hits the weapon, Herbert Casey. All right. The weapon. I talked to Pat Tyler. <laughs> I said, I understand he calls himself the weapon. He said, well, with a first name like Herbert, wouldn't you call yourself something else? <laughs> so Casey's in the end zone. Slack with another touchdown throw, his third of the game, and he's run for one. Extra point is hit up and good by Wynn Lyle. And with 7.20 to go, Auburn is in command 31-14. That's me, Tommy Lasorda, before I lost. The Orange Bowl, NBC Sports. We have 7.20 left to go in the fourth quarter. Don Crickey with Ahmad Rashad and Jim Donovan, where the Auburn Tigers, after trailing 14-3, have run on a string of four touchdowns, 28 straight points to take the game over 31-14. And Reggie Schlack completing his last 11 passes, that last one, to my man, Herb the Weapon Casey. Here's a guy, remember his name because he is going to be a big time star. Well, he's off to a good start today. He certainly is. He told me yesterday, he said, you know, I'm going to show out. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live up to that name, The Weapon. Scoring drive, just three plays, 32 yards. It came, you remember, after that trick punt play, the fake punt that didn't work. Carlo Snow runs back to kickoff once again for Ohio State. Auburn excelling on special teams sweeps him under at the 22 yard line. Great receiver Jeff Graham out of the game have the Auburn defenders. And there's a touchdown Reggie Schlack just rolling out firing the ball outside to the weapon. He's a sophomore and he's a guy that Pat Sullivan the quarterback coach told me that he is going to be a great player runs great routes. Good times rolling on the Alabama sideline. That's a good feeling. There's a couple of great quarterbacks there. One old one and one young one. That, that slack's going to be in the NFL. Throws it well, runs it well, and makes the right decisions. Screen pass to Snow. Auburn's there to get him at the 23-yard line. A first down play in Auburn's defense really rising up now. When it was on the line, these Auburn Tigers really started to play football and just shut down everything. They really did. Now, they didn't succumb to all the mistakes and turnovers that they had in the first half. Even though Ohio State was continuing to roll, that Auburn team just kept plugging away there, and plugging away, and they came right back. Look at this. Look at these stats here. First half, 217 yards. Second half, they've been shut out. This Auburn team could beat any team in the country on the right day. They did it. They beat Alabama when they were number two and unbeaten the tide. Downfield pitch. I can't connect off the run. They have a certain confidence about them that Pat Dyes has instilled. And I mentioned earlier that the, Bobby Olive, the antenna receiver, am I there? I mentioned earlier that there was something special about Fran Tarkenton that he never felt like he was in a position to ever lose a football game. And that's the same thing about Pat Dye. And he has his players believing the same thing. So that when they were down in the first half, they still believed they could come back and win this football game. You mentioned his credo, I don't believe in miracles. I do believe in never giving up. Auburn down at halftime, rallies to just dominate the game in the final two quarters, 6.25 to play in it. Then we go to Charlie Jones and Merlin Olsen at Tempe, Arizona for the Fiesta Bowl. Matching Florida State and Nebraska. Downfield pitch again, and it might almost is picked off by the free safety John Wiley, number nine of Auburn. 
And the Fiesta Bowl is to Dick Enberg and Bill Walsh at the Orange Bowl in Miami, where number one Colorado is about now getting ready for that pregame meal against the Irish. This ball almost picked off. They had a chance to make that interception, John Wiley, but that's why he plays defense. If he'd have caught that ball, he might have put him over on the offensive side. Long kick downfield by Waston, and he fair catches the ball at the 29-yard line with 6-11 to play. So Auburn, in command, takes over the ball once again, leading 31-14. Ducks standing it to a sixth consecutive victory as they're in command of this game against Ohio State, 31 to 14. It's interesting, Ahmad. Bob Cassis was talking about Barry Alvarez leaving Notre Dame as assistant head coach and going to uh, Wisconsin. I flew with Barry Alvarez about a week ago from South Bend to Pittsburgh, where he was going to interview for the Pittsburgh job. He said the Wisconsin job had been offered to him, but he was concerned about taking it because it's so tough to win there. Well, Wisconsin, that's hockey country up there. If you're going to be the hockey coach, you probably got a chance to win. But if anybody can do it, he has a certainly certainly has a chance to. He is a fine coach. Excellent. The Badgers have had some big years, although not for a while since Vander Kellen and Wisconsin went to the Rose Bowl some years ago. That they your uh, old beat teammate Hackbar, didn't they? That's right. Well, as he caught that ball, his knee was down. That's why they stopped it. Reggie Slack and the Auburn Tigers in the lead 31 to 14. Slack, with his stock rising in the opinion of NFL scouts, runs the clock as he takes it across the 25. Championship Monday on NBC. From the Hall of Fame Bowl, we go to Tempe, Arizona, and the Fiesta Bowl. Florida State, the only team to beat Miami of Florida this season, going against Nebraska. And the Huskers lost just one game. That, of course, to the number one team in the land, Colorado. And then it's on to the Orange Bowl in Miami, where Colorado, 11-0 and rated number one in America against 11-1 Notre Dame. The Irish listed as a slight favorite, although Colorado is unbeaten. Some pro scouts, one of them told me about he thinks Colorado's front seven on defense will all play in the NFL. Well, that's that's quite a statement right there. That guy having a great day, and you know, all these football fans got a chance to have a great day. You can sit right at home and watch three great football games without getting up to turn the channel. You've got the Fiesta Bowl coming up after this and the Orange Bowl. Auburn band getting down over there now. Robert Van doing a little boogie and rightly so. They lead this game 31 to 14. Auburn against the Big Ten in bowl games. Back in the Rose Bowl, they beat Michigan State one year and in the Sugar Bowl defeated Michigan. These two teams, Auburn and Ohio State, have not played since 1917 when they met at Montgomery, Alabama and played to a scoreless tie. They did share the national champion 23 yard line. Slack is big, 6'2", 215 pounds. He's going to go high in the draft. And extremely strong. And, and, and in talking to Pat Sullivan about him, he's just so intelligent. Reads defense as well, delivers the ball well. And, and Pat says what his strong point is, is he's a great athlete, but he still stands in there to throw the ball. A lot of times you get a lot of great athletes. If they get a little bit of rush, they want to run the ball right away. But not Reggie Slack. He will stay in there, take the lick, and deliver the ball. We now have a delay game penalty. Referee McDonald. Big news in Florida, of course, those Gator fans all revved up about Steve Spurrier going over to Get coach ball foul. University of Florida. Grossman, defense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, it did. Never listen to me. See, I don't wear one of them striped shirts. An offsides penalty. Don't intend to, right? No, I don't intend to. You're either a referee or you're in jail. Neither one of them I want to be. <laughs> Richie Nell ready to punt the ball from inside his 15-yard line. Barefoot 
foot boy with cheeks of tan. Tampa beaches. Ohio State's not leaving early. I, I'm a little confused. It wouldn't help even if they were sitting there trying to draw them off sides. It's fourth and uh, and more than five. Pat Dye is also the Auburn athletic director. He's got a full plate down there at Auburn, Alabama. Just a delightful man. I, I've enjoyed both of these coaches, but I've got a chance to talk and get to know Pat Dye a little bit. Just an enjoyable fellow. Likes to fish and hunt. Here's the punt. Bobby Olive runs it back for Ohio State. And markers go down, as does Bobby Olive at the 43-yard line. Over the last six years, as you know, Ahmad, Auburn has had more players drafted by NFL teams than any school in the country. That fact is not lost on recruits. Not at all. And they, the guys that they've had drafted have gone on to become very impact oh. players. Not just players that have made the team, but they've gone on to become stars. I think they said uh, every single one of those guys drafted made an NFL roster for at least one regular season game. Flipping call is called against Ohio State. Bobby Olive feeling the punt. Number Flipping 57 just pushing the back team, a little bit. 15-yard penalty, first down, 10. One thing we want to say about John Cooper, he told us the other day that his team is a couple of years away. He said, uh, just to be quite frank with you, we're a couple of years away from really hitting our stride, but they have had an excellent year this year. He has done a fine job of coaching up there at Ohio State. They'll finish 8-4 and four with the loss today. Last year they were four, six, and one. Cooper will have a good team next year and the year after, as will die, because they're top football coaches. They're proven winners. Look at the marks. Certainly has. John Cooper has won every place he has been. Coached a while out at Oregon State and at UCLA as an assistant. But he was under a, Tommy Prothrow. Yeah, he said he learned a lot from Tommy Prothrow. I wonder if he learned how to play bridge. That used to be Tommy Prothrow's thing. He'd, Shoot, he'd be late coming to practice because he'd be in the locker room playing bridge. They say that he would, he, when he was at San Diego, he would get players off the wire wire that could play bridge. <laughs> That's why he's not at San Diego, I guess. He's probably still there, but not coaching. The pipeline to the pros, the colleges with the most NFL draft choices in the last six years. I would think Miami would have a lot. They do. UCLA, Penn State, Texas, and the Sooners of Oklahoma. Those Oregon Ducks, they've sent a few. Not this many, but a couple. And that big... They're on the other list. That big ovation that you just heard was because uh, Reggie Slack has been named the Hall of Fame Bowl Most Valuable Player. Well deserved. He really came on to lead the Tigers from behind. Out pattern downfield. Fry throws the ball to Bobby Olive, who gets out of bounds, stopping the clock with 4.02 to play. The Fiesta Bowl matching Florida State and Nebraska is next on NBC Sports. As you look at the MVP in today's Hall of Fame game, number 17, Reggie Slack from Milton, Florida, and Auburn University. I've got to give the comeback player of the day oh, award to Danley, who got almost... It was good to see him bounce up and run <laughs> off. He almost got his head knocked off his body and continued to have a great game. He did. Tremendous game. First down, Buckeyes. Fry is swept under by an overwhelming pass rush, led by the All-American Craig Ogletree. Third sack of the game for the Tigers. Craig Ogletree is just at his starting blocks and just takes off outside the guard and gets his arm in there. That shows you how strong he is. He makes this sack with one arm. Fry on second and long, long yardage on the run. Pumps it downfield. And the ball is taken by Bobby Olive at the 49-yard line. It'll go as a catch, and it's a first down for Ohio State. And Greg Fry was pressured there by Walter Tate, number 76 of Auburn, who weighs 300 pounds and can dunk a basketball. They're into their... Ohio State trying to get back in it. Winning it's almost impossible, but they can make the score much more respectable. And they're going to try to do that as an open receiver is downfield. Scotty Graham, and he drops the ball at the 33-yard line.
Greg Fry releases and then the big rush of the Auburn Tigers gets him the omnipresent Ogletree with the hit. That's just one of the hazards of the game. If you're going to play quarterback you're going to take a lick. Especially when this guy's on the other side of the ball. Fry's 15 for 25 for 220 yards and a touchdown. Deep drop gives him time. Out ball, but now Fry, who was so laser accurate in the outset, missing receivers. That time he was trying to get the ball to James Bryant, number 41. Well, the guy who had the big first half, Jeff Graham, has been very quiet this second half. Yeah, they've taken Jeff Graham, the receiver, pretty much out of it. There's Ogletree showing that he can pay a little bit of pass defense to the ball, just a little bit overthrown. But his forte is rushing that pass. That's what he likes to do best. Third down and 10 for Fry and Ohio State. The big rush by Ogletree. Here comes Tate. He gets the ball away to Olive. And Bobby Olive is down inside the 37 yard line. It's a 13 yard gain and a first down for Ohio State. Very good play by Fry and Olive. Fry getting the ball away and he was under pressure and Olive making a fine catch and getting up for the first down. There's number 76 Our Tate, man. 300 pounds. Fry fires it over the top of him. Olive, a nice catch and gets out of bounds. They call Big Tate Q, short for barbecue. He can get into that. <laughs> End off to Scotty Graham. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 30 yard line. So Ohio State using the clock judiciously as they have 253 left to play but they're way down in the game after leading it by a 14 to 3 count in the second quarter. Ohio State now trails Auburn 31 to 14. Walter Tate as he comes running off the field here came into Auburn at 330 pounds. He's a freshman. He's down to about 300 pounds now because coach die. So you must be in shape to play on his football team. Came in at 336. The big day when he broke the 300 barrier, they said. He's gotten down to a low of 299. Big rush again. This time coming hard on the plate was Johnson, number 79. Chucky Johnson. Fayetteville, North Carolina, got through the pass blocking, running free in the backfield. Puts the heat on Greg Fry. Well, this is just a tough position for Ohio State. When you're in, you got to throw the ball. You're trying to make something happen, and all of a sudden, you just let those Auburn Tigers, and they are just so active up front. They just pin their ears back and just come after the quarterback every single play. They know you're not going to run. They're down in three now for Ohio State. 30 yard line of Auburn. Big rush again. That time it was number 91, Lamar Rogers, who got a hand on the ball. Auburn's defense with Wayne Hall, a former Alabama linebacker, designing it, shuts down everybody. Just a very nice move there. And we talked about the depth of this Auburn team, and they're shuttling people in and out and not losing any efficiency. Buckeyes ready to go for it now on fourth down. Fourth down, they need just over three. Turns it to the outside. He gets a first down and gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 2.38 to play. There's no quit in the Buckeyes as they keep on attacking this Auburn defense, which was number two in the nation in scoring defense, allowing 10.6 points a game. Well, John Cooper's got his guys. They, they, you're right, Don. They will not quit. They just keep coming at you. And John Cooper, he's coaching like they got another hour left in this game. He's got his boys really fired up because you in a game like this you want to end on an up note that you're giving it your all. Exactly. Into the end zone the ball is thrown it is too high for tight end Palmer. Jim Palmer going for the ball but couldn't get to it. So it'll bring up second down and 10 with two minutes and 32 seconds left to play. Pat Dye and the Auburn Tigers about to finish a 10 and 2 season in the preseason poll. Some rated Auburn as a national championship team. In the preseason poll, a couple of early losses to Florida State and Tennessee knocked them down, but then they've risen back up. 
with six straight wins to close out the season including today's there is no I mean there's a there's a loser on the scoreboard but both of these teams we commend on just making it to this game it's an honor to just play here penalty markers down as five throws on the run and he's got too much on it there's a marker down at the line of scrimmage and also a marker down in the Auburn backfield in the secondary the Cornhuskers and the Seminoles are on the field at Tempe Arizona getting set to kick off the 1990 Fiesta Bowl and we'll be going to Charlie Jones and Merlin Olsen as soon as this one is over as we have 223 left to play in the Hall of Fame game. Two calls against the Tigers. First thing they've done wrong on defense in a long time. Offside and a hold. They made all their penalties in the first half. and Two penalties on the play. Offside defense. Holding defense. The holding penalty was accepted. Ten yards. First down. I'd like to thank Jim Jones, the athletic director at Ohio State. Steve Snap, the sports information director, and his assistant, Rick Van Brimmer, who's also spotting. And from Auburn University, David Housel, the SID, Mike Hubbard, Thad Paré, and spotter John Cole. And our statistician for NBC Sports today is Kerry Holler. Fry drops, loops it over the middle, and it's picked off by Quentin Riggins. And he's to the 10-yard line. So the Tigers stop the Ohio State threat with 2.16 to play in the game. Auburn takes over the ball once again, looking to run out the clock with a 31 to 14 lead. And Quentin Riggins is one of the most well-liked players on this team. He's a guy that they look to for leadership. Some play. He's just, that's a fine play, a one-handed interception. And he just, you know, when you think about uh, college athletics when I talk to Quentin Wiggins I this is what it's all about he's just a great athlete a great student a great representative of his university he is all of that and he runs over and picks up coach Pat Dye this is his last game last game together a senior from Montgomery I've got a what a brush I really do it's it's incredible. running with the ball is Daryl Williams a freshman back from Pritchard Alabama yeah, they expect great things from and he's out across the 35 yard line 16 yard gain. Quentin Riggins there number 41 a very emotional player ending his fine career here at Auburn University. Room 107 of Sewell Hall at Auburn University they talk about is there's a lot of tackles living in that room. That's where Ogletree and Riggins room between them they have over 200 stops. And he's, he's the most popular guy he on is. the team. They just all love Quentin Riggins. Two ten left to play. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. The coordinating producer of NBC Football, who also directed today's game, is Ted Nathanson. The Hall of Fame Bowl was produced by Terry Ewart. Replay producer Jeff Himes. Bowl update show was produced by David Neal. Directed by Bucky Guntz. Technical director is Sal Nagita, and Auburn has the lead, and a first and ten play, and the Tigers go to the straight ahead run. Out to the 30 yard line, Alex Strong, a senior fullback from Macon, Georgia. A fifth year senior takes it straight ahead. 153 to play. Auburn with a 31 to 14 lead. Slack with some terrific passing numbers, Ahmad. 16 for 22, 141 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions, and he completed the last 12 passes. Three of them were touchdowns. Another run. This was a pitch back to Alex Strong as he is taken down at about the 33 yard line. That'll bring up third down and short for Auburn. Tom Lease was on the stop. Number 81. Ohio 
Ohio State finished the regular season with an eight and three record. They were six and two in the Big Ten. The Wolverines of Michigan won the Big Ten with an eight no mark. Illinois was seven and one. Ohio State and Michigan State six and two. Strong speculation that the head coach of the Spartans, George Perlis, could be leaving to coach the New York Jets. I have a feeling that they're going to try and douse Pat Dye with some water or something. Got a bucket trying to sneak up on him. But as you were talking about Ohio State, I think next year they are the team to watch in that Big Ten. Fry comes back. There he is. Quarterback. <laughs> they have a top transfer quarterback from Notre Dame who will be eligible next year, Kent Graham. <laughs> They didn't get Pat Dye. They were trying to throw a water bucket on him. He got out of the way. Still got those good feet. Still got those good feet. He used to block for Tark. Said that he was the reason Tark didn't scramble so well because he played guard in front of him. 41 seconds to go, and now Auburn will punt the ball. Ohio State will get it back one more time. Bobby Olive is back deep. Hit downfield, and here comes Olive. And he bails out with 29 seconds to play. Uh, and then it's off to Tempe and the Fiesta Bowl. The Florida State Seminoles and the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Two teams that met there in a thriller in 1988 in the Fiesta Bowl. And then from there, it'll be to the Orange Bowl in Miami. Top ranked and undefeated Colorado against once beaten Notre Dame. John Cooper told us before the game his team was a couple of years away. They've done it. They played Auburn to a standstill in the first half and then were overwhelmed. Yeah, even a little bit better than that. Then they're overwhelmed in the second half. But like I said before, they are a team to watch next year. Fry dropping back, and here comes the Auburn rush, and they get Greg Fry again, this time back at the 10-yard line. With 20 seconds left to play. Ogletree got him. And that was a, a very nice thing. Stasiak and Ogletree shook shaking hands right after that play. So Coach Dye with victory in hand, a sixth straight victory to conclude a 10 and 2 season, goes over to shake the hand of John Cooper. They must have visited for about a half hour on the field be well before the game. That'll do it. The final gun sounds with the Auburn Tigers, the victor in the 1990 Hall of Fame Bowl, 31 to 14. This has been, uh, I mean, I've really enjoyed myself, Don. Being around this college atmosphere and watching these two fine teams play, I, it's just been a, a pleasure. There's the MVP, Reggie Slack, with his touchdown run. Now for Ahmad Rashad, this is Don Crickey. And for Jim Donovan, we send it to the Orange Bowl and Bob Costas.